the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. of the famous song by Leonard Skinner, Sweet Home Alabama, where the skies are blue. Welcome into the PRL coverage of the Truck Series here live on Race Spot TV. Tonight, we're at the beautiful Talladega Super Speedway. Myself, Derek Watson, along with both producer and color commentator, Joshua Lee here out at the banks of Talladega. And Josh, chaos is on the menu. I get to play the double again this week. I was on Monday night in the full throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series, and we saw a three-wide photo finish here at Talladega. Now, we're not seeing the NASCAR Next Gen machines tonight. We're seeing these trucks. We're seeing the Grand National cars, but it's all the same. It's Talladega. It's wild. It's crazy. We don't know exactly what to expect other than the fact that we can expect the unexpected expect the unexpected but what we can't expect is the rest of the schedule after this is dover kansas darlington north wilkesboro and charlotte to round out the season right before the u.s memorial day holiday it's been a beautiful schedule what's been beautiful by the way for zach panzarella he won the race last week josh and now leads in the points over patrick calgill by five points i'll tell you what zach has been on cloud nine all week long after that win Austin Hunter's in behind with Mike Tumor and Tanner Johnson. And then Brandon Chatley, Andrew Sharp, Mike Richter, Marty Calvert, and Philip Beaver round out the top 10 in points. Now, as far as the teams, let's take a look at that. What a back racing final drive. That's a new name, by the way. We'll talk about that later. 239 points there. 17 points ahead of DDI Motorsports 44 ever. That's where uh, Zach Panzarella resides. What a back racing hunters, RBM Shake, Phil Mar. The SDI boys, big fast racing with Jake Mackey and his friends over there. J Loss Racing, RBM Bake, the compliment to RBM Shake. And then they're kooky, they're creepy, they're spooky, and whatever else the song said. Adams Family Racing, and the words hammer, Josh, they do what they want to do, say what they want to say. The team points and the driver points are getting very, very close. And we're at that about halfway point in the schedule, Derek, where those points are really, really going to start to matter. But a place where anything can go in the points, it's Talladega. You can gain a lot of points. You can gain a bunch of, a bunch on your competitors. You can also lose a lot of it in the process as well. You really can. Well, let me tell you what else matters. That's our sponsor. So let's go ahead and thank the people and the companies responsible for tonight's broadcast, starting with Advanced Sim Racing. They are owned and operated by passionate sim racers. Advanced Sim Racing Designs and builds the sturdiest and most durable aluminum profile racing simulation cockpits available in the market today. All PRL members also get a 5% discount on all ASR products using the Precision 5 coupon code. Next up is Racebox. Racebox offers mid to high end button boxes for sim racing enthusiasts. From the most casual gamers all the way to the most meticulous sim racing drivers. They are competitively priced and carefully handcrafted are the button boxes and they're an enjoyable addition to any sim racing setup. Visit raceboxsimracing.com and get a 5% code using the Precision 5 coupon code.
Next up is the Bud Kicker. Bud Kicker products are an incredible immersion and realism to every game. You can feel every nuance and truly put yourself in the driver's seat. Visit Butt Kicker for more information. Moradness. Moradness is a performance lifestyle brand motivated by motorsports and founded by professional race car driver Daniel Morad. Mr. Hedge iRacing Photography. Capture your finest, proudest, or simply worst moments from your hobby and up to 8K resolution. They're a great addition to any sim racing room. And finally, Get ready to learn how to go fast, fast with Advanced Motorsports. Follow them on their social media channels to become a better driver fast. Well, I'll tell you what, Josh, that Mr. Hedge thing, the best, worst, or, you know, otherwise proudest moments, there'll be a few of those at Talladega today. I think we're going to see a couple of interesting moments to say the least we mentioned that big one of course every time you go racing at talladega you kind of have to mention the fact that the big one is on the horizon don't know when it's going to come but we know it will eventually happen and as we take a look at ryan newman right now laying down his second flying lap graham wildman gonna move up in the in the timesheet, Stephen Kirby also moves up. And there's another thing we're very used to seeing at Talladega, the Wonder Bread schemes. Of course, I think we all know exactly uh, what all these Wonder Bread schemes and Big Red on the tailgate as well is referencing. Yeah, I think we do. In fact, we'll have two Wonder Bread machines in the field tonight, so we'll keep an eye on those qualifying about to wrap up. Currently, Will Jennings, by the way, part of Big Fast Racing, is up on the top of the board. Philip Beaver, Garrett Austin, Jake Mackey, and Marty Calvert, your top five. Big story tonight, Josh, your second place in points, Patrick Calgill. Sort of self-imposing a penalty to an incident he felt he caused two weeks ago. He is putting himself end of line for the start of this race. I think something else interesting looking at the drivers that haven't laid down a time yet in qualifying and now have, won't have the opportunity with 10 seconds left on the clock zach panzarella he's going to be starting shotgun on the field past all of the 24 drivers that elected to take a time in qualifying so he's going to be fighting from the back we know you can go from the back to the front pretty easy at talladega but that middle lane uh, the middle of the pack is also where those wrecks seem to start from yeah, easy to re relative term for here. But let's go ahead and take a look and see here. Everyone is going to start here for the Talladega race here for the Truck Series for Precision Racing League. We'll get the grid loaded up in just a moment. There it is. All right, so here we go. Pole sitter, 56.264. Will Jennings with Philip Beaver on the outside and out Bucky's truck in P number two. Garrett Austin and Brett Adams, third, three and four. And then Jake Maki and Marty Calvert, fifth and sixth here at Talladega. Dylan Schmidt going to start to the inside of row four. Andrew Sharp to the outside, P8. Mark Elliott, Kyle Dewey going to round out your top 10 from qualifying. Mike Toomer Jr. and Stephen Kirby in one of the few Wonder Bread car trucks that we've got tonight starts P12. Yeah, he's part of RBM Shake. And Ryan Newman, not the Ryan Newman, but still a talented driver nonetheless over there in P13 with Tanner Johnson on the outside. Zachary Williams and another Wonder Bread machine on the P15 with Rodrigo Morales in row eight and P16. And then Alex Wright and Tom Amassi in 17th and 18th. P19 goes to Matthew Alaka. Graham Wildman going to start rounding out your P20 drivers. Luke Davis, Mike Richter going to share 21st and 22nd. Patrick Cowgill, you mentioned that end of the longest line penalty, Derek. So it'll be qualifying 23rd with Nicholas Hunter rounding out the 24 drivers that elected to take a time in qualifying. Now we'll go back through. Zach Pandrella said he wanted to start from the back and run his way through, so he will. Brandon Chatley in 26. Evan Williams and get Austin Hunter, 27-28. Edward Peltz, that's a third Wonder Bread machine. It, yeah, that's three in the field, actually. And then Antonio Bannister, uh, also not allowed to qualify, P3. And rounding out your field, just Zachary Austin going to be rounding out the 31 drivers that'll take the green flag here tonight from Talladega. All right, that's a look top to bottom at the PRL truck field. Here's your track conditions. 89 degrees Fahrenheit on the track, 2.41 p.m. Of course, no night racing available at Dega due to those local sanctions at the uh, track. So that will not happen. But I think we're in for a very exciting and uh, this will be a very probably a very quick race in some forms. Only 40 minutes on the clock. And remember, of course, unlike where we have lap counters that are determining the amount we're going to race in a single night, 
we're not gonna have any time added with cautions so those that 40 minutes is solid we did no overtime restarts as well which is a big thing we always talk about with plate racing especially at talladega overtime becomes a thing no overtime here 40 minutes flat on the clock got to make everything happen within that 40 minutes and if you don't, uh, these drivers are going to be wondering what if all the way to October when we have Talladega back on the NASCAR schedule. Yeah, a long time away from now, isn't it? Well, is going to put you on the spot, Josh, if you're one of these drivers in the field right now. What's your strategy to win Talladega? I am of the strategy that running up front is always the best. I like being up front, controlling my own race. I was in an official earlier today, and I was like row five, row six in the pack, and just getting stuck in the outside line, nowhere to go, can't go forward, can't go backward, and you just feel like you're at a wall. So I like to control the race, be up front, controlling the lines that are working best. So I like where Will Jennings, Philip Beaver, even Garrett, Garrett Austin, Brett Adams are at, but we all know that you can go from the back to the front. Just depends on how aggressive you want to be. If you're Zach Panzarella, if you're Patrick Cowgill, I mean, how aggressive are you going to be from the back of the field, especially early on in this race when those tires are fresh, the confidence is high? Is anybody going to go from the back to the front quick, or are we going to see early cautions with the drivers trying to do that? Yeah, either one's a possibility, and of course, it'll happen very quickly. 40 minutes will not take long, especially if you're Panzarella or if you are Patrick Cowgill, who's right now the first two in points, but in the back of the field today. Well, here we go for the first time of two races tonight. It's time to buckle up those seatbelts, get your last drink of water, your last big breath of air before you have to go live for 40 minutes, and the pace car is pulling down. Will Jennings will lead him around. There's the pace car down off the track. Will Jennings, part of big, fast racing, he wants to go big, fast right now, because at any moment now, it will be, for the first time at Talladega, green flag racing right now. Already got one car spun by my Philip Beaver off the track. There's trouble in turn one. No caution for the moment. That's Philip Beaver. There's another truck behind. That's Will Jennings. That's first and second. There's no yellow. We now have two new leaders. Andrew Sharp's up on the high lane. Wow, big moments here in turn one lap. One. Look at that push, Josh, on the bottom lane. Will Jennings went from the front all the way to the back. He was P30 for a second before Brendan Shatley towed it back into the pit lane. Grabbing a replay now of what happened to the 420 machine. I think, Derek, it was just the pack getting started. Uh, outside truck wanted to come down and unfortunately was not fully clear. We'll get that replay up in a moment, but unfortunate for driver who qualified on the pole and was looking to lead a good amount of laps, Will Jennings. Yeah, part of big fast racing, as we said, right now having a hard time. We'll see if he can get back to the front again. But currently in front's Brett Adams leading that bottom lane around the track. Look at this replay. This is the start of the race and the big part of the screen. There it is. And there he is coming down. Not clear driver. Oh, man, right across the hood. And that put the first two drivers down on the Ooh. track. Oh, my goodness. That was oh, Patrick Cowgill that he came up into, I think. Oh, man, that's a hard hit for Patrick Cowgill. Already had a pretty low point peng result last week we'll have to keep up with patrick cowgill and see what comes of it cowgill said he hates this kind of type of racing and now we see why and definitely see why from the eyes of patrick cowgill we'll go on board with cowgill through that oh, wreck i want to see wreck. exactly what happened but yellow we're wrecking flag, elsewhere yeah, there's double wrecks there's one live one in a replay one in the future possibly oh no here's a damaged truck wildman's in it is that wildman that's graham wildman i believe right there was having a hard time during practice. Was working really hard to get his super speedway skills honed in. And right now, I think he just went for a wild ride is what he did. We'll take a look in a moment when the race spot replay machine spools up for that one. So under caution here at about the, uh, the seventh, third minutes of the race. You see that line of trucks behind him. Sierra points leader Panzarello is back there. He's okay. So lots to look at in the first few minutes, Josh. Lots happening. No, uh, no, no calm moments at Talladega. No calmness in that first stint there, but let's take a look at that replay. Now, 
three wide in the middle for the five. We're focusing on Zachary Williams. Williams comes down, hooks the 823 oh. up into Wildman. Newman gets involved in that one. There. The 603's in it as well. That's Alex Wright. Just a handful of drivers with, uh, honestly, not a lot of places to go for a couple of them. It's a handful of drivers right now who are either needing to rely a little bit more on their spotters or or trust that spotter call a bit more. As twice now, we've seen a not clear call affect this race. Well, here we are, Andre Gallo, only about four minutes in. So except for damage, probably no pit stops for anyone here. You know, uh, gas could become a problem in this race, but I suspect with the number of yellows and laps here, Josh, probably not the story will follow. Pit stops and strategy is kind of a weird talking point at Talladega because you're going to have the strategy. Of course, you have to pit for fuel at some point. If we get enough cautions, I think some drivers might try and stretch it all the way, which might be possible, but not by a lot. Um, but in the strategy sector, really, it's when you go on a pit road and when you come off of pit road and how you do both of those things. You're not really talking about, you know, tire strategy, trying to conserve tires, you know, undercuts, overcuts, and push all that vocabulary out of the way for Talladega. It is when do you pit? Who do you pit with? How do you get off of pit road? Do you have trucks around you when you exit pit road? Those are all big things when pitting under green flag conditions. Here under caution, go, go in, pit. Lose a bit of track position. You'll gain it back in a couple of laps. But what we've got is a couple of drivers coming into the pit lane, just looking to top off with fuel or get some damage repaired. They're going to go right back into the pack, just like nothing happened. Yeah, these drivers must believe that by topping off right here that they feel as though they are 100% safe on fuel in order to go ahead and make that happen. So a lot of drivers down pit road, of course, you saw a lot of cars also been involved in the first couple incidents. So maybe there's some correlation there as well. Well, Brett Adams continues to lead here under caution at Talladega. We'll see. We got a lot of craziness happening. Marty Calvert's up in second. Kyle Dewey is up in third. There's not a name we've talked a lot about this season. So lots happening here. I'm curious to see, Josh, if we can go back and find that Patrick, Patrick Calgill replay now that things have calmed down. Got it ready. Let's take a look at what happened to Calgill. We'll go on board with him. And it looks like he just off that initial start running the inside line. You see the two trucks wreck in front. You see the smoke. He's checking up. Nowhere to go. Nope, nowhere to go. No time to react either. No, it all happened very fast. Nice job by Calgo. They'll probably have some damage, but kept it off of both walls. That's important here at Talladega. You can fix most of the body damage, but if you hit a wall here, that's not it's not good news for you. But lights in the pace car are on, so we're going one more time around. What do we say we check in on some of our drivers? Let's take a look at some of those driver camps, see who we got available on feed for us to look at tonight. Let's go through the field. We'll just call them off as they appear on screen. We'll let Josh just push the buttons and surprise me with who we have available to us. I know we have at least one interesting one to talk about. We'll get there when we do. As I suspect the lights on the pace car will go off this time. Yep, there we come around the line. See, of course, that line after pit road. And there, the lights are off. So one more time around. Do we have any driver cams? There's one. This is Nicholas Hunter. Kind this of? This is his AI cam. Yeah, kind of, right? But look at that. Now, I don't know if we'll see it under yellow, but that, those hands move from what I was told earlier. They were moving. I, th I don't know if they have full range of actual human movement. So it's kind of like, if anybody played iRacing before, oh, what? 2000... 16, 17, when they added the the driver hands go all the way around, mm -hmm. they used to just go 90 degrees and then stop. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Pretty much same thing. Yep. So there's Nicholas Hunter, part of Whataback Racing Hunters, in his quote unquote cam. Look at that team. Look at the one to go marker in the AI there. That's, that's some pretty cool stuff. That's like VR chat type stuff he's got there. That's pretty cool. Do we got anyone else on cameras? There we go. There's Patrick Cowgill. Looks a little annoyed at the moment. So I think that's fair to say after that moment. Look at that beautiful Lego set in the background, Josh. Nice Lego set for him. There's Shane Kirby. 
Also got him riding along with us. We've got Ryan Newman as well. And there's all of your Ooh, proof Michigan. if you didn't believe that it wasn't Ooh. the actual Ryan Newman. Evan Pasoko, a fellow RaceBot commentator and, and, you know, really commentator of everything else, would be proud of all that Michigan propaganda. But uh, we do not allow that on this broadcast, being from the great state of Ohio. I didn't go to college, so I've got no horse in the college fight. I'll say go, go Owls because they're my local uh, F, local FAU college. All right. Well, speaking of going, we're about to go green as the pace card now comes out of turn four. This time it's Adams, Calvert, Dewey, Sharp, and Jake Mackey to round out your top five. So for the first time, at least in a few weeks, Brett Adams will lead us around here. And the 31 and a half minutes on the clock as Brett Adams getting ready to hit the loud pedal. And any moment now, Barney the Flagman will drop the flag and we will be ready to go again. In fact, right now, here we go. There it is, green flag at Talladega. Right back on that loud pedal as they all get up to full song. They're not gonna reach full speed until they get about halfway down that back straightaway. But you can see that outside line, the 16 gives a shot oh. to the 23 of Brett Adams as Adams moves to the bottom lane. That is clean. It works out down the Alabama gang. Super stretch as the outside line tries to get the momentum going. Now five trucks strong, but that inside line is way stronger. Well, tell you what, we almost saw another opportunity of not clear. I wasn't sure if Marty Calvert was going to stop coming low to follow Brett Adams, but eventually he did here. Now, Andrew Sharp, that car, that colorful, bright car, the second on the outside lane, had a lot of time in practice to learn how to push and was practicing his push. So we'll see how he does here. And right now, the bottom lane is more full, but there's still a good number of drivers up top here. There's a four-car drive, five-car drive. They could make this work on the outside if they want to make it work across the start finish line as Calvert's going to lead that lap back to turn one outside line prevails Calvert's going to get clear Calvert moves to the inside line he leaves Andrew Sharp now leading the outside line he's got Tanner Johnson in tow who's that wanting to go in the middle of the 92 of Dylan Schmidt trying to entertain that middle line you can go three lanes here at Talladega like we're trying to do now three wide for the race lead as Adams is going to dump Calvert up the middle yeah, Calvert now in what we call the sucker hole effectively. He's going to fall back quickly, needs to find a spot in line, and does right there. He'll be third in line. Andrew Sharp's having a hard time with that top lane. Those guys are swinging way too wide, Josh. None of them are staying in line, and that's what's making them fall like a brick here on the top line. But Brett Adams, once again, as we come around, is going to lead at Talladega. That's very easy to do to let those trucks kind of breathe up the racetrack and not being able to hold in between those two yellow hat or, or white hash marks, especially when you're coming through that tri-oval. The tri-oval here at Dega has an extended lane down on the bottom of the racetrack that the inside lane goes in. So it really is all bets off for the middle lane to try and figure out where it wants to go. But right now, Calvert's going to get pushed to the lead. Andrew Sharp moves to the bottom. Sharp will now lead the inside line. Calvert back leading the outside line. And any hopes of three wide are diminished except for those two trucks leading that outside line, trying to catch back up here in the pack. And one of those is the 420 of Will Jennings, not letting that first lap incident get him down. No, he's definitely not. Let me tell you something. I noticed from Sharp right there at the front of that pack, took a really gingerly move and changing, changing lanes to the bottom here. As that race goes on, he's going to have to get more confident in changing lanes, either top, bottom, or whatever, because later in the race, they will not be that patient and wait for you to uh, let you get across the lane without just sort of bumping you out of the way. But here it is Sharp and Calvert, one and two, leading their lanes respectively. Calvert now gets a big push down the back straight away. And right now things are calming down a little bit, but still got a third lane up top. And it's Will Jennings leading a couple of drivers around in that top lane. And I'll tell you what, that top lane does work really well here at Talladega. In fact, it's coming pretty quickly here, Josh. That outside line is really, really good, especially late when it comes to racing here at Talladega. Last minute pushes, whether it's overtime, whether it's white flag, couple to go. I mean, you can use that outside line to your advantage, but big caveat with that is not only are you going three wide, you gotta trust who you're racing around, but you also need a lot of help. 
the inside line here at Dega does not need a ton of help. You can kind of go if you have six cars, six trucks up on the outside and about four on the bottom. Bottom lane still going to prevail through turns one and two and turns three and four but down the super stretch and on the front straightaway it's fair game for that outside line especially if they're hooked up like that outside line is right now and moving to the bottom of the racetrack goes tanner johnson after a big hardy shove to the back bumper of Mar marty calvert calvert looks content just riding leading that outside line will jennings trying to slingshot himself using nothing but side draft up in the third lane well, where Jennings is benefiting is that middle lane can't decide if they want to be middle lane or top lane. And they move around a little bit of hip check there. And what that moving around does is two things. One, it gets him some draft to keep him up there. And two, every time you move a lane, you break the draft of the line you're in. And it sort of helps kind of neutralize what's going on. But look at this push from Dylan Schmidt here. Getting a little off center, that's making me nervous. You gotta push the middle of the bumper. If you push down there where Schmidt almost was, you will turn Calvert across this field pretty quickly. My oh my, Will Jennings up at fourth in line on the top lane. Spun around and lap one. Here we are, 14 minutes later, and he's up at the top of the field. Leads the way in that big fast racing number 420 machine. Like you mentioned, Derek, fourth on the outside line. Listen to his throttle real fast. Just listen to him running on the back bumper of that truck in front of, I believe that's gonna be Jake Mackey in the 13. It is, that's a teammate and team owner, Jake Mackey up in the 13. And you're right, listen to the lift here. This dispels the myth of Dega. Everyone thinks that Dega is this full throttle, you know, hold the pedal down, put a brick on it, but it's not. You have to lift, you have to be strategic. You have to know when to get out of the throttle. Because if you push Jake Mackey right here, all you're probably going to do is push him into the guy in front of him and then create an accordion effect that goes backwards and will spin one, two, three, or many, many more people out. That was honestly riding on board with Will Jennings there. Almost perfect use of that throttle rhythm. I've heard different theories of kind of how to stay in the pack at Dega. I've heard the brake dragging theory where you're full throttle all the way around and you're using the brake to try and stay off the truck in front of you. I like just letting off the throttle a little bit, letting that draft carry you forward and kind of staying a solid maybe eight inches from the truck in front of you. Unless you're doing what we just saw from the driver second in line on that outside the 92. He gave a big shove to the 16 in front. You can do that on the straightaways. You do you get caught doing that in the trioval or in the corners. You could spin that truck in front of you. That's when you want to use that throttle Ooh. rhythm. Stay off the truck in front. And now we have got a good old fashioned 180 mile an hour pace laps going on right now as we're two by two. Yeah, we are two by two. And you know that comment you brought up there, that's sort of like the 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 hot topic, if you will, right? Like push in a corner or don't push in a corner. It's like Coke or Pepsi or McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's. It's you know, whatever you got, coffee, your tea. And there you go, push in the corners or don't push in the corners. I am firmly a don't push me in the corner kind of guy. I know some drivers think that's a weakness and that, you know, it makes you not go as fast, but I don't like how the truck feels or the car feels if you start slamming in the corners. Very easy to get the truck light, very easy to make the mistake of what we see so much when it comes to bump drafting, where you get just a couple of inches off the square back bumper of the car in front and you end up turning them around. I can handle pushes in the corners. Not saying I like it over pushes on the straightaways because they also don't aren't as effective when it comes to the corners with how the drafting works. But I can take the pushes in the corners. I don't know if I really trust many people in officials to push me in the corners. So that's, that's I'll, a say, I'll problem, say stay right? off of it. That's a completely separate discussion, but it's worth worthy bringing up. <laughs> It is. Now, what I noticed here, by the way, and why the dot bottom line is doing a little bit better than what the top line is doing, look how it's hard to find. If you look through the top four drivers, it's hard to find a gap between those trucks. Look at this. It comes by the camera shot here. But look at the top lane. Like, even from Calvert back to Schmidt and from Schmidt back to Maki, there's some gaps in that line there. You can't have that if you want to draft well. You have to be really nose to tail here and get those gaps closed up. Well, once again, Tanner Johnson came in tonight, I believe, a top five in points leading around Talladega. We've seen a bunch of lead changes already. We've seen a bunch of drivers get that bonus point for leading a lap here in the truck series. And with 22 and a half minutes to go, I suspect we'll see a couple more leaders before this race is over. There's the third line working again. Oh, there's the Wonder Bread cars in line together. Well, the two Ricky Bobbies found be? each other is what you're saying. 
can't even say it's a it's a pear. It's a I don't know. It's a not a loaf. It's just I don't know. It's just a an I, empty sandwich. I guess so. I was going. To, I was trying to make a bread joke, but I, I yeah. I guess you can say I didn't rise to the occasion there. That's a, all right. That was that was good. All right, well, here we go. You see him again. There's that one Wonder Bread truck. There's a big gap up there, and the third one went back to the middle lane. See, now here's what happens. That middle lane moves up every now and then, Josh, and they're going to provide a draft to that top lane, and that keeps that top lane moving and going around. Marty Calvert was temporarily in the lead here, coming down the back straight, but that bottom lane on the corner will help neutralize that. Man, Dylan Schmidt is making me nervous with how much he's moving across the back bumper of Marty Calvert. Back down the front straightaway, and you can see that three wide trying to work, but not a lot of help up there for the two Wonder Bread trucks. And they're trying to make it work, and we saw Will Jennings make it work with the side draft, but that was exactly what happened earlier, Derek, when you were mentioning uh, that the middle line didn't know exactly what they wanted to do. That's why that side drafting worked. I mean, if both lanes are formed up like we're seeing now, bottom lane's starting to uh, frazzle out a little bit, but when bo uh, both lanes oh, are working goodness. in tandem, we've got trucks in the wall trying to save it. My goodness, well, so you know what they wanted to do for a second ago, Dylan Schmidt knew what he wanted to do. He went ahead and went to shot to the bottom and temporarily took the lead, but never crossed the line. He will not get credit for it. And Tanner Johnson just, just went ahead and got right back in front of this gap here. But they were everywhere right there, Josh. They were almost four wide there through the back straight. And now they've sort of got to calm down as much as you can here at Talladega. And we are doing well. There's Ryan Newman. Battling for 21st. See all that? He's got a Lions jersey, a Tigers jersey, the Michigan hat. I think he's a Lions helmet in the background. So, beautiful setup for Ryan. Ryan's new to PRL this season, really doing great. You know, just showing some good skills. Had a, you know, a couple rough races. But uh, he says he loves, loves super speedway racing. So, he says he ran two official races today and won twice. So, he's hoping to bat 1,000 here after this race. Definitely doing good, and I can see a strategy starting to take into play as we almost get contact mid-pack. That was close between that McDonald's number three of Matthew Alaka. He'll move his way to the bottom of the racetrack now after almost making contact with the inside line. Ooh, we've got more trucks getting squirrely at the front. This pack is getting antsy, Derek. If I'm a driver in the middle of this pack, if I've got a spotter up on the spotter stand, I'm telling them, get me out of this pack. Yeah, yeah, I'll move back, thanks. I'll move back. I'll be at the back of the field until this calms down. But it's like someone maybe told him we're more than halfway through the race. We just passed the halfway point, and all of a sudden, the intensity has picked up. It's like the whole field is drinking a Red Bull or something. And here we are. Look at him. Three wide back here for like 10th place. And it's just crazy. Andrew Sharp's falling back. And now we have... Calvert and Jake Mackey's up to second, by the way, right behind Marty Calvert. And they are three wide still. Doing a great job here at Dega. Only the one caution so far. And it is really, honestly, one of the best races we've seen out of the truck so far this year. Three wide now. It's common through the middle of this pack. The front lines have calmed their way down albeit a little bit, but now we're seeing this middle of the pack start to really oh. try and form something up and more trucks almost getting up in and into the outside wall. We have stayed green since that first yellow flag. I don't know how much longer that's going to last, Derek, as we've got trucks slicing and dicing up to the outside line. Well, that will help those Wonder Bread machines because now they've got a friend to help them get around here. And of course, you know, it's it's a different idea, right? Staying the bottom's the shortest lane around, but we know from qualifying that you sit to that top lane, you sort of get a little bit more revs out of the engine on the outs of the corner. So every driver likes a lane they like. Some lines want to be on the bottom because they want to think that if a wreck happens, they can be, you know, near the grass or near the off track to avoid it. Some drivers want to be up top because they think that that wreck sort of washed to the bottom of the track. So. Everyone has a preference here at Talladega, Josh. There's no, I mean, there really is no right or wrong answer because it's just a, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of luck, a little bit of everything that makes Talladega what it is. But look at this a beautiful push here by Jake Maki in that 13 machine. 
and he is now pushing Marty Cavarambi. Here comes Brett Adams again. Been out of the lead for a few laps now, and here he comes, Josh, up to the lead, up to P2, and now almost door to door with P1 through turns three and four. That was a big push, and it's gonna pay off a little bit. He gets closer to the lead, but if you're that outside line, you almost have to clear that inside line by the time you get to turn three. If you're still fighting with them when you go into the corner, inside line's gonna prevail unless they get so spread out that they essentially start individually losing the draft for a moment. But that outside line needs to get formed up. This is about the time we need to start thinking about those moves. When I'm entering turn one, I'm thinking about what am I gonna do when I hit the Alabama gang super stretch and have an opportunity to make a move. That should have been what the 23 was thinking. I would have been thinking, let me get back to the front bumper of the 33. If I'm the 33, I'm thinking, let me get to the back bumper of the 23. See, they start to make that move. They pull up side by side with Calvert, but no move made by the time they get to turn three. They got to plan almost a half a lap before they make that move. They got to start thinking about the move and getting in position to make the move. And if you're Calvert, all you're thinking is, please, Jake Maki, don't bump incorrectly. I like this lead. I like this lead. Push, but not incorrectly. That's all that's on his mind right now. Again, you've seen cars trying to make that outside lane work. They need to get bunched up out there. You can't really do it alone. You sort of need to find a teammate here, which almost everyone has, and make that outside lane work together. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Josh, with that one caution, I do have a question if we stay green about if anyone is good on fuel. We know that there's really, the, the races with no pit stops are the ones that are caution riddled. It just, we never really get a run in, but that's not the case here. So I'm wondering when pit stops will happen for some of these drivers, because right now, Marty Calvert's burning more gas than anybody. 24 laps down, estimated to have about 22 laps remaining when they come by the line this time. It's going to be way close. more than the truck hold. Yeah, that's because some of these drivers did not pit under that first yellow. So that's going to be way more laps than these trucks can hold. So we'll wait and see when those pitting calls start happening or if another yellow comes out that does that. Look at that big gap there. One, two, three on the bottom. And then look at Matthew Alaka and Andrew Sharp. Got a big gap there. They need to close that up if they want to keep that bottom lane moving. All right, well, here we go again. Man, oh man, Brett Adams right there has now finally got back to the lead technically. It won't count officially until they cross the line. It's a 33. Moving back and forth there. Whew. It is scary up here. It's Kyle Dewey, by the way, in the 33. Just not enough momentum on that outside line right now with how they're formed up, especially with the inside the 13 and the 16 being hooked up as tight as they were at the line inches separating the two i think adams might have barely gotten that lead no he did not by two one thousandths of a second the 23 stays p2 down the back straight away the 33 toyota tundra tries to give him another shove tell you what if you're brett adams right now and you can see in your mirror and you see how kyle dewey is moving brett adams might be thinking about listen it might be time to pull up out of lane here and yeah, I might lose the lead right now, but maybe I'd live to fight another day here with almost 14 minutes to go. Cause that, all that moving back and forth, eventually we'll possibly hook that back bumper and send him around. So it's, it's, a, it's a game of nerve. It's, it's a mental chess game. It's a game of bluffing. It's a game of whatever you can want to call it. How brave are you to stand there and just wait for something to happen? And again, right now, Marty Calvert will hold that line and Brett Adams needs Cal Dewey to hold still. He's been antsy. And of course, you can't just stay tucked up on the bumper of the truck in front of you for multiple laps at a time. That's going to lead to the oil temps, water temps climbing, possible engine damage, possible engines blowing up. But you can stay close enough. You don't need to really move yourself out of line a lot unless you're so tucked up on the truck in front that you have not let air get into that grill so much. So where we're at right now with where the 33 is running, I think he's just moving slightly to the outside line. Might be as simple as trying to let the drivers behind him know, hey, let's get a third line going. Let's get up, let's get upstairs. Let's try and make something work because he's still just etching his way up there. Now I think a truck just got caught on the outside line. 
And let's be fair to Kyle. We've been talking about this whole thing about holding your line. It's not as simple as it sounds. Inside the car, he probably thinks he, that line is perfectly good. When you watch any, when any driver watches their line after a, in a replay or whatever the broadcast would have you, you'll find out you're not as calm as you thought you were inside the truck. But real quick here, while the battle's going on up front, I want to find our points battle if we can, Josh. There's Zach Panzarella back deep in the field. They're trying to lay back. Panzarella told me that he wants to lay back. He wants to wait for the yellow. He doesn't want to be caught up in it. Points racing means playing safe here. He's got one truck pushing him. So there's Panzarella. Now, where is Patrick Cowgill? Let's take a look on track and find right Patrick Cowgill. Him. Yeah, Patrick is 28. One lap down is where Patrick Cowgill is currently. So he is, that is where he is. And then Panzarella is 26. So Panzarella still kind of holds that lead in the points, but not by much. So hopefully that'll change or maybe it won't change. We'll wait and see. That will make this points battle more interesting going into Dover if that's where it finishes. A couple of drivers last time by did come into the pit lane. This is Austin Hunter, Nicholas Hunter, Mike Richter, Luke Davis, Tom Amasi, or Amasi actually not coming into the pit lane uh, that last time. It was just uh, Austin Hunter, Nicholas Hunter, and Mike Richter. Luke Davis in pit lane, still in pit lane, however, getting some damage repaired. Here comes another truck from the back, and we're three wide for the race lane as Kyle Dewey takes it over. Kyle Dewey takes it over in a very frantic moment. Look at this here, three and four wide scattered in this pack very quickly here as we were looking back and finding pit stops and other matters. And lap now truck. Dewey leads the bottom lane. There is a lap truck involved. There's more lap trucks coming as pit stops happen. And there's those Wonder Bread machines still inching forward here. Little by Will little. Jennings just got super loose on the middle line. Whew. And I tell you what, if we saw it, Josh, you know he felt it. Oh, he definitely felt that in the wheel. That force feedback was going crazy. I hope he doesn't have a butt kicker on him as the well, because he yeah, definitely right? would have felt that. Well, so there's two things that can happen in, in the force feedback when that happens to the driver when you get that loose. Either it fights you really hard, or there's sort of this weird moment that's hard to put into words, and maybe you have better where like, it just sort of drops out, and it's like you're holding on to air. And that's how you know you're about to lose the truck on a loose vehicle sometimes, is that it's almost like the force bag drops out for just a second. And it's like you're just kind of suspended in midair holding this wheel and it kicks back in and you know trouble is about. Especially with a direct drive wheel as well. Something else these drivers might do here at Talladega oh, is we oh, have a truck in the wall, we're wrecking. Wrecking. Oh, big, that's Cal That's the big Gordon one. Calvert. Oh, this is gonna be the big one, yep. There's uh, Will Jennings involved, Dylan Schmidt. Oh, there's a car up on the side. Who is that? I didn't see who that was. Might have been the three on his side, but that was huge. There goes our green that flag pit stop three, talk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there goes that talking. For people who were hanging back or people who already pitted, they may benefit from this if they survive the wreck because now they don't need to have that need to pin again. And you're right, it was the three for the record that was up on his side. That was Matthew Alock. He was not loving it in that McDonald's machine. Let's take a look. Big one at Talladega on the back straightaway. One of the Wonder Bread machines in the wall, but that, it was a separate incident at the front with the 92 getting into the wall. That's everybody. That's going to be just about everybody. Look at this. such Will Jennings. There's, oh, there's Matthew Alaka up on his side. There's the 45. There's Brett Adams. He might have survived it. I'm sure Panzarella, I think, would have survived for how far back he was. There, oh, man. Oh, that's how fast it happens, by the way. So we can get an onboard view, maybe from like Matthew Alaka or maybe Brett Adams, and you'll see how fast a wreck forms here. Oh, Matthew Alaka stuck the landing, though. Nice job. On board with a locker. Watch this here. It's right in the bottom lane, minding his business. Sees that happen. Checks up, checks up, and got spun around. And yeah, there it nowhere is. to go. Oh. That's a scary ride. Well, as you said, pit stop strategy out the window. 
everyone can pit under yellow. Really, we're only getting one more restart out of this. We have gone very fast through this race, about seven and a half minutes. Here comes almost the, all the front drivers. Maybe everyone will come down together, in fact, on pit road, put some gas in it, fixing a little bit of damage you can fix in that time and be ready to go. 53 Tanner Johnson comes in from the lead. Everybody else in for service as well. Does anybody stay out? Of course, we did have a handful of drivers that did pit, possibly seeing this wreck coming. We'll have to wait and see as our timing works its way through. Andrew Sharp's going to be the first one out of the pit lane. Here comes the rest of the field. Well, and I'll tell you, here's the story to follow, by the way. We're going to watch this off of pit road. There's Matthew Alaka, Brett Adams, and others coming off of pit road together. But let's go find the pace car. And there's a familiar truck right behind it. The puppy machine. He's having a doggone good day because he is now behind the pace car with only one more restart to go, Josh. Still yet to make a pit stop, however. He's got 29 laps on that stint counter. He was yeah, one of those trucks that did pit. He did have damage from an earlier wreck. So he did pit in that first yellow flag that we had some, uh, what, 20 minutes ago? Yeah, roughly, yeah, right at the start of the race. So he might be good with the caution laps and that little top off of gas. So we'll wait and see. Well, Josh, I think it's time to discuss our, what we're, I guess what we're starting to call our, our question of the week. Taking some time to get to know the drivers in the PRL truck in Grand Nationals and asking the a random question. Sometimes it's about racing, sometimes it's not. So today's question, Josh, was if the rest of your life you could only put cheese or bacon on a burger, which would you pick? Now, for the record, jo uh, Josh and I are both Team Cheese. Hashtag Team uh, Cheese. Get it trending. Hashtag, yeah, there you go. Get it trending. Uh, and here's my justification real quick. There are numerous flavors of cheese. There's there's Swiss, there's pepper jack, there's provolone, there's cheddar, there's whatever you can think of, right? How many flavors of bacon can you name? I can name variations of bacon. Flavor is a bit of a different. It's like it's like you right. put flavoring on top of it. Right. It's not yeah, like it's not individually yeah, it's not like differently made cheeses. Also, from a scientific standpoint, putting cheese on a burger making it a cheeseburger also adds moisture just in the process mm. of cooking. So I there feel like go. scientifically, there's really only one correct answer because bacon is a topping. I agree. So let's run down the list real quick here for the truck series of where we stand. Team Cheese, that's our team. You got Nicholas Hunter, Andrew Sharp, Mark Elliott, Brandon Chatley, Patrick Cowgill, Mike Richter, Zach Williams, Ryan Newman, Stephen Kirby, and Edward Peltz all team cheese now here's the people who gave in my opinion the wrong answer in fact he was just up on the side his side a moment ago matthew alaka was a team at bacon mike tumor jr team bacon philip beaver and jake maki are all team bacon that's just weird i do, I, I like I, bacon I, on I, my I, burgers I, I get bacon on my burgers but just bacon and meat cheese. no cheese yeah does that's not that's not normal yeah, I'm with you. It's it's kind of weird, right? See, I brought well, up that everybody on the losing team, which seems to be Team Aiken, should just get end of longest line penalties. <laughs> that didn't happen, yeah, right? But. Well, there's a, there's a more extreme opinion we'll get to in the next race in Grand Nationals. That'll uh, knock your socks off. But here we go. Speaking of knocking your socks off, it's about to get wild, crazy, loopy, insane, mental, whatever you got. It's about to be that for the next three minutes or so last week's winner your point leader zach pantarello is in p1 piero admin nicholas hunter is in p2 then it's mike richter austin hunter andrew sharp your top five madrigo morales stephen kirby alex wright mike tumor and philip beaver round out your top 10 well josh are you ready this is gonna be it three minutes left on the clock this is all they've got Final restart, final visit to the Geico restart zone. This is it. Timer, it's now or never. Time to make it all happen. There we go. Less than three minutes on the clock. Green flag is out. There's the green flag waving. Panzarelli gets on the pedal very quickly. Gets a nice jump on Nick Hunter. 
And here we go. Green flag is in the air. Now, the danger that Panzarella is going to face here, he had a nice jump, but now look at that, how they're catching him. That jump created a gap for Andrew Sharp and others. I think that's Nick Hunter now on the inside. And here they go, down back straight. Panzarella is the only driver, Josh, begging for a yellow. Trucks moving around up to the outside line as well. Two minutes left on the clock. Looking at about a handful of laps. Up on the outside line, that is Nicholas Hunter in the 19, trying to get a push from Austin Hunter behind him. Outside line, not nearly as formed up as the outside, but they're going to have a runoff turn four. They're going to run off turn four. Less than two minutes now. Only about three laps left on the clock if we stay oh, green. Wrecking. There's a wreck. Wrecking. Yellow. Now it's going to be who is in the lead at the moment of caution. I think it's Panzarella, but I'm not sure. It could have been Nicholas Hunter on the outside. Could it be we'll two in out. a row for Panzarella? He's holding the lead. Nicholas Hunter's on the outside line, though. We're going to wait and see how timing is scoring. They got to let the, pay, the pace car is going to catch them. Then the pace car will line them up, and that will be the official scoring. We are done racing with the trucks at Talladega. There's some discussion. No confirmation yet. There's the pace car sort of driving through. You're going to like that boldness from the pace car. Just sort of, you know. All right, let's see how they line up here. Gonna have to wait and see what happens. Right now, Nicholas Hunter's pacing ahead, but I don't sure if that's official. I don't know. There's been no celebration of voice chat yet, Josh. For the moment, let's take a look at what exactly happened to bring out this last yellow flag of the night. Three There's wide, 603 comes again. down. Oh, guys, not clear. That's the four truck. Oh, man. Right into the middle of the pack, too. Calvert's in That's, it. He led a lot tonight. That was Antonio Bannister in the four right there. Wonder, we oh. don't have exactly like a caution light cam like uh, our friends over at Fox Sports do. But you I want to see trust if we you, can though. see. I trust you to do this correctly. I trust you to figure it out. Look at this here. It's going to be the moment. They're already wrecking at this point. Panzarella's leading. They definitely were. Caution had to have been out at this point. Let's take a look at the Barney cam. He's got the yellow. Back There's it up. The yellow. Oh, let's back it up. There you go. That's a good call. I like this strategy. Right about here. That's that about when the like yellow pinch. is. That angle is not that great. Looks, that looks like Nicholas Hunter. It does. And I'll tell you right now, Nicholas Hunter is pacing ahead of Panzarella. That's Hunter by inches. Know. Oh my god, look at that. That is Hunter. That you're right. That is the best camera angle right there. Wow. Well, I that believe is close. If not ever, this will be the first time in a long time that Nicholas Hunter will be victorious here in the PRL truck series. Look at that. That is the gap. unofficial photo finish and photo. By the way, I, who wants to be the official to go through this photo right there? Look at look at Sharp and the 53 back there. Look at the 109 and the 27. And, man, there's a lot. There'll be a lot of upset drivers to hauler wanting to debate this photo, probably. I got to say again, that is unofficial, purely based off of Barney grabbing the yellow flag. But even backing it up, Nicholas Hunter has the lead all the way through until Panzarella gets a shove from the 51 uh, right up, right before they cross the start finish line. Hunter had the lead oh my, all the way through the trioval. I think this is going to be a Nicholas Hunter in the 19 win. It is definitely, I believe so as well. The white flag is out. Barney will give them the checkered flag this time by lights on the pace car are out. And here's the big story, by the way, if we can zoom the camera back, let's go back all the way to P23. You're going to find a very, very disappointed Patrick Cowgill. That's a big hit to points. We're already had a low scoring point last week. Not a great night for Calgill. It almost was another amazing night for Panzarella. Still gets P2. He almost got two wins in a row here in the truck series. Not going to be that. But Nicholas Hunter in the 19 is going to take a walk off victory through the tri oval. Wow. Take a big, deep breath, Nicholas Hunter, with that creepy AI camera because you have your win here in the PRL Truck Series. 
at Talladega. Can they come now through the long trioval? Look at that there. Look at the lights. One to go. Checkered flag. The flooring. That is both amazing and creepy all at once, Josh. Look how excited that AI looks. Oh, we get to see the arms move. <laughs> That's him uh, working his way uh, into the uh, into burnouts. <laughs> Nice little faded camera shot there, so you can see the burnouts. He's not waiting for the lap to finish, by the way. He's decided he wants to do the burnouts right now. I agree. If you you win the race, you can. I feel like the winner can do burnouts wherever they please. But Nicholas Hunter back to PRL victory lane. And what a thriller finish there as well to end out the truck series tonight. We still got one more race coming up. <laughs> yeah, looks like these guys are racing back around right now, but they're not. They're just all excited to get around here and congratulate Nicholas Hunter on that win. You see Patrick Cowgill on the outside and whatnot. You're right. We still got the Grand National cars to go, and those will probably be a much wilder ride, much looser race car. But for now, let's let Nicholas Hunter soak this in. Let's see how he burns it out. There's Patrick Cowgill. I thought he could give a little congratulatory bump, but... Missed out on it in the corner here. Is he going to do it through the front straight? All right, here it is. You see Panzerella down there waiting to congratulate on Hunter. Hunter crosses the line officially. Maybe not. Is he going to try to park it up in front of the line? And he's going to be a whole team celebration as well. Yeah, he just sort of stopped. He's done. He's right there. He's parked it. And Calgill is trying to push him along, saying, get to the line. And no, not going to happen. Well, let's take a look at the results top to bottom. Oh, there he is. Now he's got it moving finally, of course, as we move screens. Here we go. Nicholas Hunter is your winner. Under caution, Zach Panzarella's in second, Austin Hunter's in third, Mike Richter, Stephen Kirby, Andrew Sharp, Tanner Johnson, Mike Toomer, Brett Adams, and Matthew Olaka was up on his side five minutes ago and finishes P10, Josh. Goes to show what you can really do at Talladega. Edward Peltz ends up P11. The last of your lead lap drivers, Rodrigo Morales, will finish P12. Then the rest down from here, plus one lap on the day. Mark Elliott, Kyle Dewey, Zachary Williams, Garrett Austin, Ryan Newman, Jake Mackey, Tom Amasi, and Zachary Austin will be third of your top 20. Back to 21st. is starting to get back to that used car lot, to quote a, a comment from Joey Tebbin. Philip Beaver, Dylan Schmidt, Patrick Calgill, all the way back in 23rd. Alex Wright, Luke Davis, Antonio Bannister, Marty Calvert, Will Jennings, all the way back in 28th, five laps down. Graham Wildman and Brandon Chatley, 29th and 30th. And then last on the grid, I believe we have one more. Do we not? We do. It's Evan Williams, 38 laps down. Well, in a way, this is sort of fitting to have this man join us in the booth because he comes in here and helps us spot. He helps PRL. He supports us. But now he's part of our interviews for Victory Lane. Nicholas Hunter, you did it, buddy. You're victorious. That first lap with Chatley and getting Cowgill involved, as well as my brother Austin, um, I believe, and then pitch strategy, insane. I I couldn't have done it without my teammates. Well, here you go. It's sort of a bucket list item for any sim racer on the oval side, I believe, is to win at Talladega, and you've done it. When the caution came out, did you know? Were you confident you had won, or were you sort of holding your breath, waiting for Irisine to to figure it out? So when I saw the caution trigger, I look over to my left and I see Zach. It looked like he had the bumper on me in that sector. And so I was not paying attention to my standings or anything else like that. And there was some questions out in the field that I was mostly focusing on until Austin like snapped me out of it and said, hey, are you supposed to be in front of the 12 or behind him? What does it say? I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be in front. Well, let me tell you, after the broadcast, we have a photo finish picture for you that will show you your narrow margin of victory. Well, I got one more question for you. What the he heck is this creepy AI camera thing? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's completely me. It's real life. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just glad you guys caught it this time around. I think I've been racing like the f last four rounds. And well, we were, I know you so we were in broadcast prep and Josh goes in my ear. 
what is this weird thing I'm looking at? And I was like, what? And he had to give me a screen cap. So listen, congrats. Uh, I know you're sticking around eventually to help us with Xfinity like you always do, but uh, I'm happy for you. Congrats on P1. Thank you, guys. I want to thank Waterback. I want to thank Miracle Flow once again, my teammates, everybody in Waterback, especially the guys who are going to be racing tonight. Um, good luck to them. And thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. There's Nicholas Hunter, P1. Then I'm also going to be selfish, and I'm going to take P2. It's a teammate of mine outside of PRL. Zachary, look at you. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i just as surprised as I'm sure you are, man. Oh, I'm not surprised. You've been putting on a show. You've been up here. You were up front. You made the strategy calls. You pitted early with that damn it with the uh, first caution, mm -hmm. and you were laying back. You told me today that was the plan was to lay back and let everything happen. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the more I was running officials all week, I was paying a ton of time to the fuel and how much I was using it uh, and wearing the draft. And yeah, I kind of came up with that plan this morning uh, that if we did get an early caution or around that exact time to go in there, top it off and never bid again. Um, so I, I, everything couldn't have timed better uh, than it did for me. I couldn't believe the situation I was in coming to that uh, last green flag, but I got lucky and Oh man, I'm I'm so glad I wasn't up there earlier in that race. Uh, those guys were putting on a show. Um, I was back in like I don't know 20th, and I could see them, and they were four wide, three wide for like multiple laps. I probably would have messed that up. So <laughs> I'm glad I was uh, just a spectator for that. All right, well, get a little closer to your microphone and tell us about the event that's painted on your on your truck right now. Yeah, thank you for asking, and sorry about that. Do you hear me better right now? Yeah, you're cool. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Mellifest is uh, next week. It's uh, next Sunday. It's at uh, Casa Agria Specialty Ales over in Oxnard, California, kind of like in the Ventura area. It's a car show and a dog adoption event. So, Daily Driver Zinc is a company that puts on car shows in California, uh, Arizona, Vegas, and Texas. Uh, but we always like to put a spin on them. They don't, we don't just like to put cars in a pavement parking lot and call it a car show. We also like to make it something fun. We've done uh, wineries, we've done theme parks, we've done all ty types of uh, crazy stuff. And this time we decided to uh, pair up with some local shelters and they're gonna bring a bunch of uh, local pups up for adoption. And we'll have them inside the brewery uh, so you can pet some dogs, maybe come home with a new best friend. And also at the same time, drink some amazing beer, uh, get our collaboration beer with Casa Agria that we'll be releasing that day and see some amazing cars um, and hang out with me. So yeah. Can't wait. All right. Well, great job. Anyone you want to say thank you to or give a little shout out to on the way out? <laughs> thank you to you, Derek. It's been always a great working with you all. It's always great working with you all week, uh, leading up to these races, uh, getting some pointers from you. Thank you to my team. Thank you to Dalton, Dylan, Tom, Dom, Jose, CM Pennington. Still love you so much, man. Miss you. Um, Chris, Graham, I know I'm missing a few of you guys, but love all you guys so much. Shout out to my beautiful fiance, my amazing family who started watching. It's like went out and got a win. So now they're like, I guess we have to watch now. So hopefully they're watching. Came close to a second one. Can't believe it. And I also want to say thank you to uh, our league organizer, Nick Hunter. Congratulations on that win. If there was anyone I would have uh, rather lost, or there's no one I'd rather have lost to that way than him. And uh, how beautiful that it's him and his uh, brother pushing him to the win. That's so cool. And what an amazing way to get your first win. And Nick does a great job uh, running this series. And couldn't be more proud of him. So thank you. And thank you to you guys. Thank you to Ray Spot. Um, can't wait to watch your broadcast. All right. Great job tonight, Zach. We'll see you next week at Dover. Thank you guys so much. All right. There's Zach Panzarella. And now P3, Joshua Lee has caught up with the man who pushed the victor, Austin Hunter. Oh, you Austin, doing? you get to push your brother to the victory, but you still walk away P3 on the podium. How was tonight from your perspective in the car, in the truck? Oh, it was great. Um, it started off a little sketchy with turn one there with uh, that first lap incident, but everything really came together for us as a team. Uh, we were able to work our strategy perfect, and I couldn't be happier than my brother won. Well, looking forward uh, with the truck series into the future of this season, going to Dover Motor Speedway up next. I don't think you get more opposite than Talladega, but where's the confidence level at heading into the one mile concrete oval of Dover? Uh, Dover is probably one of my worst tracks in all of iRacing. Um, there's a magnet on my right front to that turn two wall, and I just seem to knock it down every race, no matter what I do. Um, so honestly, if I finish on the lead lap, I'll call that a success. Well, there's been a good trend of people saying that it was their worst track and they end up winning the race. So hopefully we see you in victory lane in Dover, Austin. Congratulations on your podium tonight and go celebrate with the team. Congrats. I appreciate it. Just wanted to give a shout out to uh, my friends at Waterback. Uh, Miracle Flow, and congratulations to my brother Nick, who and I have been racing together for a long time. 
I'm a even though I'm the younger brother, I taught him everything he knows. So I'm just so happy for him. Congratulations again. Austin Hunter finishes P3 here for the virtual Talladega Super Speedway. And Derek, we're already into qualifying over on the Grand National side. So we'll finish up things here in Talladega. But I mentioned next week going to Dover Motor Speedway. Very, 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 very different than Talladega, but still going to be exciting exciting so there's some speed in that track and it won't be full flat out it won't be bump drafting but there will be some fast laps fast pace and, and honestly some big calamities there's nowhere to avoid a wreck at the monster mile well you know that is next week at dover but now as you said let's reset let's take a small breath if we can because now it's time to go back to dega it's like we never left because now it's time for the grand national series for the precision racing league and we are here for our second race of the evening. It's a great race and a lot of fun to be expected here in the second half. Well, let's take a look at their schedule. It's almost identical, Josh. There's only one difference now left between the trucks and the Grand Nationals, and it's week eight. So we'll wait for the schedule to load up here in a second. I'm sort of hurrying Josh along, and I should be nicer to him. He's doing lots of work tonight. So it's it's uh, Dega, Dover, Kansas, Darlington, and then Road America, and we get no no North Wilkesboro for the for the uh, Grand Nationals, and then Charlotte Motor Speedway for Week Nine. Well, let's take a look at the points here. Of course, Richard Reekin Jr. has a beautiful lead over Dustin Scruggs, 19 points. Then it's Bradley Holly and Reese Bogue, third and fourth, two points apart, with Ted Lowendick only four points behind them. Abner Acosta, Colton Lane, four points apart, with Daniel Knight, one point behind them. And then Jeff Adams and Adam Zimke round out your top 10, Josh. And looking over at those team points as well, Regan Bogue Motorsports holds that lead considerable margin with 40 points but then you got the duo of Whataback Racings the Overdrive and TNT teams both the second and third the second Regan Bogue Motorsports entry as well sits fourth in the other Whataback Racing the back row team in P5 a lot of Regan Bogue a lot of what Whataback and all of them mixed in between each other as well always got to look out for those team standings but as we join in on qualifying here in virtual talladega as the field gets going with their qualifying laps we focus on abner acosta who currently sits p4 on the speed charts looking to put down another lap as well as he comes across the start finish line and we'll see where exactly he slots himself in with already less than one minute remaining here in qualifying now we're seeing another car here. The 56 machine is going to come around here. You see the leaderboard now up on your screen. Richard Regan is your current provisional pole sitter. Not by much. Doug Evans really made a run at Thomas Sink. Just got up there to P2. As my voice cracked a little bit. Sorry for that. And so we're seeing some last lap battles come into play here in this moment. 30 seconds left to qualifying. So we'll see who can or cannot maybe get one more lap in. This is the 11 machine right here going to try to get a lap in here he's sort of racing the clock josh 20 seconds he should be good yeah coming down the front straight away he is definitely good to come home from that lap richard regan jr's fastest abner acosta spins coming into the pit lane after he was already done his laps scruggs comes across the line of the mcconey setup shot machine where does he go up to p3 Third. nice great run. effort from dustin scruggs he's gonna line up inside of row two Nice last minute. Like, that's clutch. If you believe in clutch across sports with baseball, basketball, NASCAR, whatever you got, that was a clutch moment from Dustin Scruggs. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting grid here for the Grand National Series. Richard Regan Jr., points later, P1 at 54 207. Thomas Sink is on the outside in the 48 machine. Row two, Dustin Scruggs and Doug Evans. And then his son, P5, Jeff Evans, right behind him with Steve Loving in that Microsoft Windows car in P6. Back from there, P7 is Bradley Holly. Abner Acosta will start P8. Nick McLaughlin with Nick Byer going to be rounding out your top 10. Colton Lane and Mark Kalin going to round out your first six rows on the starting grid. Daniel Knight in that 17 machine. And then Matt Gagnon, that's row 7, 13th and 14th. Adam Zimke and James Morgan, part of Tabit Arasa Esports in row 8. And then Reese Bogue and Dominic Begin in row 9. And rounding out your field, only 21 drivers taking the green flag tonight here in the PRL Grand National Series. Jim Westerfield, Chris Dean, Dalton Geyer, all of which did not take a time in qualifying. 
Well, here we are. People are race cars are getting lined up here. The Grand National cars is what we're racing this time by. You see drivers still making their way to the grid here. About the same track conditions, a little bit warmer, about 10 degrees. And honestly, that is sort of a factor here, Josh, because these these race cars typically are the loosest of the three uh, NASCAR branded machines across iRacing, or at least the top three NASCAR levels. So that plus a slighter, hotter track could lead to some sketchy corners. These cars are so much different than the trucks that we just saw. It's They're different in every capacity. And plate racing has a little bit you can take from the ARCA cars, from the trucks, from the next gens, from these cars. They all kind of work in tandem, but they all kind of work differently at the same time. You mentioned them being a little bit looser. That's due to less spoiler on the back end. They do get much more uh, upset in these corners, much more loose in these corners. But what they also get is faster. These cars are going to be a lot faster than those trucks, which means you can make moves quicker, but things can also go south a lot quicker as well. Well, and the other difference in these cars is how much you can bump draft. Listen, in those trucks we saw last time, you can really hit someone. You can really make a mark, so to speak, in the back of someone's truck and be fine. If you slam a Grand National car too hard, it's not as bad as the Gen 4 cars that we saw, for example, in the real sim racing um, icebreaker series in the winter. But in these uh, Grand National cars or Xfinity cars, whatever you want to call them, you can hit someone too hard and really get them around pretty easily here. Well, Richard Regan, a pretty familiar face up front. I'm sure he has the webcam already on with all the advertisements, and we'll see him later. But right now, he's just kind of breathing easy. You know, he told me he told me he hates this kind of track. Isn't that sort of the familiar tone, by the way? If you hate the track, you sort of do well. I feel like that is very true. I'm a big restrictor plate person here on the sim. Oh, I love it. I love it. Love, love, love this type of racing. However, I raced uh, yeah. two officials this week, got wrecked out in both. So it's a love, <laughs> the love hate relationship, right? I love this type of racing. I'm really, really good at this type of racing, but do I, I've gotten wrecked yeah, more times than I can count. No, 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 no. The results definitely do not match my love for this, for this type of racing. No, well, we'll see how this lines up. A smaller field, only 21 vehicles. So we'll wait and see how this lines up here. You see the big gap there to Mark Kalen needs to close that gap up here. Look at that. Look at the difference in vehicle size here. Look at the pace truck versus the Grand National car. It's sort of off-putting a little bit, isn't it? All right. Well, here we go. The pace truck is down. Race control has reminded the drivers we're going to go on green. Thomas Sink needs to get up in that field a little bit here. Line up with Regan. But any moment now for the second time tonight, we're here racing for 55 minutes. And we're going to go green flag racing at Talladega. As we exit turn number two for the first time, all looks good. A little bit of movement across the field, but everyone's lined up here. Still side by side, clean racing. The top lane's definitely got to move here, Josh. Look at it right here. They're coming at you. Look at a pretty even line so far. Inside the line slightly prevails its way through the 48 of Thomas Sink up on the outside line, trying to lead the outside line closer to the front, but these cars also kind of draft like the old next gen or the old gen six machines that we used to see where they kind of have a, have a bubble of air in between each car you're not going to see those big runs all the pushing and shoving we saw in the trucks this is going to be a lot more cordial is that the right word yeah, everything's going to be a lot more passing. calm yeah everything's going to be kind of they're going to think a little bit more. It's not going to be, oh, I've got to run. I have to go with it. It's going to be a lot more setting up and a lot more time to think about what you're going to do. Yeah, to use my favorite fake word, there'll be a lot of strategy going on here about when you do and don't make a pass, when you maybe just move a lane or don't move a lane because you have to find a way to break that bubble. The quickest way typically is to kind of weave back and forth a little bit and see if you can get inside that bubble. And if you do, then you can get a massive run. The problem is breaking that bubble. And look at there on the inside. That's Dustin Scruggs trying to get up there with Richard Regan. 
That's first and second in points. There's Jeff Evans in third right behind him. So nice little three car run on the bottom. And Regan leads yet another lap here at Talladega. Working their way back through one and two as the outside line is going to lose a little bit of momentum. Not a whole lot, but they are not going to be even with those drivers on the inside line like they were a couple of laps ago. And as they draft down the super stretch, now's when these drivers need to start thinking about what they've got with their cars. What moves can they make? How exactly are they going to make those moves? The draft really is the big equalizer when it comes to speed. Not going to see a whole lot of difference in setups on these cars, but what the setups do dictate is how aggressive they can race and how aggressive they can be with the moves they make on the racetrack. Yeah, the tightness and looseness of a race car inside a setup can really dictate how comfortable you are making the move. But look at this. That bottom lane is quickly falling apart. Drivers are getting impatient. They want to dip down to that bottom lane and make it longer. Now, what that will do for the drivers still in the top, though, it'll kind of help them for a moment. Because every time you put a person in line or move a person out of line, it sort of really affects that bubble and that draft and kind of slows down the speed. Look at this here on the top lane. There's some cars moving up here. There's Steve Loving pushing. And they're trying to get back to the front here. All I need is one person. If Dustin Scruggs wanted to pull out right now, he could probably take that top lane to the front of the field. Waiting to do that right now as we go on board with Richard Regan Jr. There's all of his sponsors, Green Street on the back end. You can see that little move with his headset, his VR headset, up to that top right. That's checking that virtual mirror. And as you see, the 41 get a big run. Doug Evans trying to get to the outside. I want to see if Richard Regan Jr. makes another look up to that mirror. What he's doing is, A, trying to see where exactly that 11 is behind him so he doesn't run in a lane that that 11 is not in. But he's also looking to see where D Doug Evans is. Does he need to go up and throw a block? He wants to know before his spotter tells him outside that the 41 is going to be there. Not going to get side by side this time into turn three, but... Richard Regan Jr. being in VR, I think personally, Derek, he's got a little bit of an advantage over the non-VR users because he can look up, look around, use his side mirrors a little bit more to his advantage. Yeah, that is one way of looking at it. There are some downsides to VR, but right now, Richard Regan is using that advantage. But let me tell you who's happy. Doug Evans. First off, he told me he loves super speedway racing. He says this is his favorite thing to do all year. Second, he said to me today, listen, I'm not a great pusher. I love being pushed. I don't have the confidence to push that well. But he says, but let me get up here and let someone push me around and I will make the best of it that I can. So right now, Doug Evans is as happy as whatever analogy you can think of that I can't have an appropriate one for. There, look at that setup. There's one, two, three, four monitors right there for Doug. Ah, man, there's triples. That's the other way to race. That's my way of racing is the triples. You don't get as much of the head movement, but you can see a lot around you if you have time to look. And yeah, Doug is right there. Now there's his son, Jeff Evans, in that pink car. Let's see if Jeff wants to move up and help his father. Also got that timing screen up on the top. He is trying to see everything that he possibly can. The outside line has really fizzled off now, Derek, as they kind of work their way into... This is what we see from the, from the real-life NASCAR Xfinity series, where we have that kind of start of the race everybody's double file everybody is racing as hard as they can trying to see what their cars got under the hood then about six seven laps go by maybe the first tv commercial goes through and then we're single file normally yep. at the top of the racetrack in the real world here at i racing is normally down at the bottom but this is the kind of safe riding around if you want to be in a long green flag run get everybody lined up on the bottom of the racetrack and you can run under green for as long as everybody stays away from each other and do doesn't push the pusher on the inside line. I think that's what they're trying to get set up for. But as I say that, here comes two, three, four more cars up to the outside line to try yeah. and get that lane formed back up. Well, look at there was James Morgan by the pushy Abner Acosta. Speaking of pushing the pusher, James Morgan told me today he feels the pressure. He's had a couple of rough races so far. And he thinks the only way to become relevant in the points battle again is to win. That's his only goal tonight. The top of the Rossi Esports driver in the 12 machine picked the red this week for the paint scheme, trying to see if he could shake off some bad luck from other paint colors. 
in right now. Here he is racing behind Abner Acosta. Abner, by the way, has an interesting moment here where he's sort of a man without a country. Josh, he does not have any teammates in this race. Talladeg is typically known as a team race. He's part of Precision Racing Esports, does not have any teammates. You have the Whataback drivers. You have um, all other teams out here racing together. And it's sort of an interesting spot with James Morgan. Neither has a teammate out here. So maybe they can find a way to work together and benefit one another. That is something that I think, especially back when can drafting was the huge thing. You needed friends, you needed help, you needed teammates. Now you need that help when it comes to the last five laps of the race. Because if you make enemies early on, when it comes down to the white flag, if the driver that you made enemies with earlier in the race is behind you, he's not gonna push you. Yep. He, yeah, maybe he not. will not help you and purposely move himself down the order as well to prevent you from getting the push to win the race. You gotta yeah, make, make friends in this type of racing early on. Yeah, I'll make a reference that might be older than you, which is not, not that difficult, I suppose, but there was a NASCAR video game in the, in, the, in the 2000s from EA Sports where that was a factor, rivalries, and, and you know, you can make enemies, you can make friends, and they race you differently. Well, that's sort of what Talladega is, is who you help or who you don't help really does come back around later as a memory, but let me tell you what's happening right now. That Microsoft Windows machine of Steve Loving is almost leading this race. Abner Acosta has done an amazing job of pushing that hot lane around, and Steve Loving is within a tenth of a second of being called race leader. What was that? NASCAR 05 total? I think in 05. Yeah, 06 was 06 was Chase for the Cup. Maybe 04. Maybe was 04. It total teamwork. What was the name? Total something. Total, total team, team control. Total team control. I don't think I had total team control. I think the first, okay, well the first, we're gonna get into a really weird tangent. I'm gonna make this very, very quick. <laughs> my first NASCAR game was NASCAR 09. My local GameStop had a bunch of older NASCAR games on clearance for like $2 a pop. So I have played all the way back to, I think total team control, if not chase oh, for the cup. And you missed. So you I missed played all of those on my used PS2 that I also had. You missed the best NASCAR Thunder, which is NASCAR 2000 or Thunder 2003. You I played. I played 04. I, I played the. I, oh, I played man. the last version of NASCAR Thunder. I think I didn't play the one. This is a very weird way to remember it as well. I don't think I played one with Bill Elliott in it. I played one with Casey Kane in it. That is a weird way. I'm a to Casey Kane a fan, so it makes sense That's to me. Way. All right, fair enough. Well, tell you what. Right now, you have to think that at least. Mark or uh, sorry, get that right. You think right now that Richard Regan is a Dustin Scruggs fan because that push he's given has been consistent all race long. He's not moved from it. Jeff Evans hasn't moved from his spot either, and he's got his dad Doug Evans behind him. The top lane: Steve Loving, Abner Acosta, James Morgan, and then the 60 machine. That's Colton Lane up there. That's your top four. And there's Mark Kalen getting involved. By the way, we get to the point of that whole cheeseburger conversation. I have a story about Mark Kalen that's going to blow your mind. His family is responsible for the cheeseburger. I need more details on that, but I kind of want to get into those details later. Yeah, we'll get there later, I promise you. Look at that camera there from Mark. Got the Goodyear tire in the background. Got the Lego set in his sim racing room there. And man, Steve Loving is just so close right here. That's not Loving, that's Dustin Scruggs. Sorry, I missed that during we were going live on the board and Dustin Scruggs has led a lap here at Dega. So now he has gained or sort of equalized that point. And now Loving is gonna pull down in front of Richard Regan. And for the first time, Richard Regan is not leading. He needs to look at the back bumper here at Talladega. He's gotta look at two back bumpers in front of him as the 27 of Steve Loving is gonna be in front of him. Dustin Scruggs now leads the inside line. There goes Abner Acosta as well in the five. Looks for the race lead side by side with Scruggs. Doesn't get there by the time they reach turn four. But that goes to show that outside line can prevail even with a little bit of help in these cars. That inside line is always going to be stronger in the corners. Unless you get a really, really big shove and have kind of three cars on the inside versus ten on the outside line. Then the outside line is going to have an advantage through one and two and three and four. But down the super stretch and down the short shoot, Abner Acosta with a big shove from the 12. Wow, that's a nice sudden move. That's the move you talked about in this race. You have to be very quick with your moves. You have to be very strategic. 
That's the difference between the, the Grand Nationals and the trucks. I was going to say, what's helping the bottom lane, or helping the top lane move, by the way, look at some of the gaps in the bottom lane. Look at from Jeff Evans up to Regan. Look from Evans to Evans. Those holes are helping keep that top lane relevant. Well, now it's James Morgan up top. He's now seen Scruggs do it. He's now seen Abner do it. Now he's wondering if he can do it. Can he get pushed to the front by Colton Lane? Can he now become the race leader? Down through the trioval is Morgan side by side with your race leader, Abner Acosta. And as they come to the line, it would be Morgan if that were the race. Oh, and there is. Morgan pulls down to the bottom, barely able to clear Abner Jeez, Acosta. Sweet. He made that move lightning fast to leave Almost Colton Lane and Mark Kalen alone on the outside. And here comes Abner Almost up top. Back. Yeah, you saw Morgan almost touched that yellow line, by the way. That would have been horrible. That car would have bobbled really bad had he got down there. But now Morgan's now under attack and Acosta says, excuse me, I want that back. That's how quickly lead changes can happen, how quickly things can happen in the pack. You just have to make the move and you got to st st stick with it. If it's a bad move, it's going to end in a wreck. But you know what? It, you made that move, own that move, make that bed, sleep in it. You just have to go with whatever move your gut says. If you think about a move for too long, if you're like, eh, I think there might be a gap, but eh, I don't know, I'm not going to make it, that gap's going to close and you're not going to win the race. You just end up having to make those moves, go with your gut, do what you can, because things happen so quickly here, like we've talked about all night, that something a gap can close very quickly, an opportunity can come up and go, all in the course of two seconds, maybe even less. Well, speaking of comp coming up and going, last time by Colton Lane was your race leader. You know, he told me today his plan was just to survive. Let's be here on the last lap and then we'll race it out. Well, he's doing a great job at surviving because right now he's front of the field and he's got uh, Piero admin Mark Kalen pushing him from behind. Kalen trying to stay on that back bumper and that brings up another interesting talking point with these cars especially and the next gen cars as well. The trucks, all of them, flat noses. They can shove as much as they want. These things, you got the Fords Not and you got the Supras that are pretty square at the front. Chevy Camaros don't even think about shoving. We're not going to be seeing a whole lot of Chevy Camaros giving a whole lot of shoves here tonight. We're going to be seeing those Fords and those, those Toyotas shoving all they can. Yeah, right now what we need to see is we need to see Nick McLaughlin close up to Mark Kalen and we see that car behind McLaughlin close up if these guys want to stay relevant and in contention for getting it back to the front here on the top line. But here we are, 15 minutes almost off the clock, almost down to the 40-minute mark here. A pit stop is required. There's no cheese in the system here, Josh. There's no cautions will save you. There's nothing. Everyone will have to make a stop as Morgan back to the lead, and he leads with about 40 minutes to go. Still a long way left. Still a pit stop to be made. Will the group try and make it to that green flag stop? Will we see a caution before that opportunity arises like we saw in the truck series earlier on tonight? Big push to the outside for Colton Lane. Another lead change as Lane moves down to that bottom lane. Kalen now stuck on the outside. That's going to be the 37 and Nick McLaughlin behind him as well. And look how quickly that outside line is stalled out there. Now three cars oh, strong as here comes Abner and here comes James Morgan. And Kalen says, I'll back out of that. Thanks. So now we got Kalen to the bottom, Morgan to the top, uh, Abner to the top. It's all sort of flip flopped around and Morgan needs another lap here. Remember, there are points in Purell for leading the most laps. And right now that does under contention oh man abner was barely clear of colton lane i'm not sure if colton lane didn't have to lift or that would have been a bad wreck that is a lot of wrecks that happen is drivers either not checking up or drivers checking up and they've got a car right on their back bumper and then it stacks and stacks and stacks and just accordions on let's go on board Try and get as on board as we can. Let's go back to Jeff Evans real fast. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with our in cab camera. Watch as he sucks up to the back bumper of Richard Regan Jr. How much view do you have of the drivers in front? Now this camera might have a little bit more FOV, so you can see a little bit more around. It's not exactly right where uh, Jeff Evans is seeing in his sim, but look at that. 
he cannot see about the next four, five no. cars ahead of Richard Regan Jr. He's basically blind. So he's relying on his spotter, if he's got a live spotter. He's relying on his mirrors. He's relying on his windshield and Richard Regan Jr. in front to react to whatever's going on so he can react and the driver behind him can react. And frankly, there's a gap here between these two cars. If we can move up real quick to Dustin Scruggs in the 11, he's closer to the car in front of him than what Evans is. Look at this. There's less of a gap there. There's less of a, there it is. There's less of a viewpoint for Jeff, for uh, Scruggs than there is for Jeff Evans. So you're right. If something happens up there ahead of him, he has to rely on the either in-game spotter or a real-life spotter. Has to rely on maybe the sounds around him, the visuals, and hope he can get checked up in time. And that's not easy as it sounds here at Talladega. That is not an easy one to do at all. But as the field works their way back down the super stretch, McLaughlin gets a push on the outside. That duo up top of McLaughlin and Doug Evans in the 41. It's working well together. That's another one of those duos. The Chevy Camaro leading, the Ford Mustang behind. Big shove from the 41 to try and get the 37 to the lead. Doesn't work by the time they reach turns three and four. They go back down the front straight away. Let's see if they can get another run going. Remember, Doug told us for pre-race, he doesn't think he's the best pusher ever. He says he'll try, but he'd rather be the car getting pushed. There's a conversation that's really a hot topic amongst iRacing as well, about pushing or being pushed. And everyone has a preference on that. You see, they're going to start to fall back a little bit. They need some help, Josh. They need a Mark Kalen to move up or a Dustin Scruggs or a Richard Regan. They need just more power. They need more numbers. This is not a, this is not a skill problem. This is a numbers problem. They're making it work really, really well with just that duo on the outside. And I think I don't want to get into conspiracy time here, but is it the drivers on the inside? I mean, they're not exactly yes. formed up too well, yes. but are they trying to save a little bit to try yes. and stretch this fuel run out? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I think Colton Lane on back, they are maybe trying to see if they can save a little bit of gas. I mean, ultimately what they're doing is this reducing the amount of pit road time. You're not going to cut the pit stop out of the race, but maybe you're just ready to, uh, you know, try to save that. Or maybe you don't, frankly, don't trust the driver ahead of you and you want to leave a gap just in case, quote unquote, something happens. But James Morgan told us, of course, he thinks he needs to win multiple times to be relevant. You know, finished, I think, top two or top three in points last season. It's had a really rough run of it. Had been involved in a couple wrecks and just not the season he's wanted. But man, look at that line on the inside. It goes all the way back through the track here. You're right, Evans and, uh, you know, McLaughlin are doing a great job up top. And look at that. What Evans is doing that you like, by the way, he's gently moving up the track every now and then. He's trying to burst that bubble you talked about earlier. He's trying to make sure he can stay up on McLaughlin. And they're there. I'll give them credit. They're doing better than I thought they would by themselves. But I think in order to get around Morgan, to get around Abner Acosta, who basically was shoving Morgan there at the line. Oh, no. There's a gap in that line. That's not going to do them well. Evans and McLaughlin has to stay together. But uh, I, I think in order to make the pass completely, they need help. Going back to that strategy that you mentioned, Derek, Maybe is not. the 37 gets a... Pretty big shove from the 41. Is that going to be the lead? It will be for the oh, 37, Doug. but he oh, leaves no. Doug Evans on the outside line with no help. Dustin Scruggs might be coming to the rescue here soon. So but let me let me let me hit a topic you talked on earlier, real because I think it's important right now. You talked earlier about making friends, making enemies, making teammates. In Doug Evans' mind right now, he has mentally written down the number of Nick McLaughlin, the 37. He knows that the 37 just did to him. The 37 could have waited and tried to clear them both. But instead, he left him behind. Will Doug Evans be as nice next time or more selfish in getting around him? Uh, if in if I was the 41, I would not help the 37 of McLaughlin yeah. if it came down to it at the end of this race. I'll just put it that way. Yep. But back to the strategy conversation real fast, because I, d I don't hate the strategy of trying to save, not really saving to el eliminate a pit stop, more so saving to save time on pit road. I, I love it. I get it. However... Under green, saving time on pit road is not going to be that beneficial because you need to come out around drivers. You need to come out right. around other cars. If a caution comes out, 
yeah save a couple of seconds gain a couple of spots on pit road under yellow under green oh, i agree i want to come out honestly mid pack to the back of the pack that i pitted with because then i've got nothing but draft and i don't lose anybody well, I agree. So what you have to do here, whether you're part of Whataback or Regan Bogue or some of the other teams, is you're going to have to work together about who's going to save. Or we're all going to save gas. We're all going to come down together or we're not going to do it because you're right. You have to come down with people, you know, no matter what your strategy is at Talladega, you can't come down pit road alone and be successful. Here we are, 33 minutes left on the clock. Nick McLaughlin's now your leader, part of that Whataback team. His teammate, Ted Lowendick, unable to race tonight due to a work commitment. So he's not here. So Nick's out there representing and doing it well up in P1. He's got James Morgan in P2, Abner Acosta in P3, Colton Lane, and Je uh, Doug Evans. Oh, there we go. Stops loving. Uh, there's Richard Regan Scruggs is in. Dustin Scruggs. That's speeding from loving. Did you see how hot he was coming into there? I'm taking a look right now. The officials, it is a, definitely a black flag for Steve Loving for, for speeding. You hit that right on the nose. I have no other black flags so far. I thought actually Scruggs might have been fast, but he got away with it. Big push for the lead. Here comes Colton Lane. Mark Kalen with a big shove. Pushes Colton Lane to the lead before they come in. Yeah, that's so what happened was when all those drivers pitted from the bottom lane, they broke that draft. They broke that momentum. And then Kalen and Lane went to the top side. Probably didn't have to check up. They probably just laid on the gas pedal and went right around. They see Dustin Scruggs off the pit road. Richard Regan right behind him. Those are teammates. So they're going to work together here. But now, Kalen, oh, I thought he was going to come down. He sort of bobbled it, but no. Nobody else. They are going to stay out again. And nobody else pits, at least from that group. From where Scruggs is at right now, not a ton of help within this group. Scruggs has Regan behind, but then you go back to Matt Gagnon and Reese Bogue. They only they pitted to, four cars strong. Yeah, they, they uh, in my opinion, what Loving and, um, or no, Scruggs, pardon me, Scruggs and uh, Regan need to back up. They need to pick up their teammates of Gagnon and Bogue and make it a four car line. This two by two thing, this, this doesn't work as well. I know you'll lose some time in backing that car up, but long term, I think you'll benefit from the four car line. Well, there you see the two different camera shots. Here comes the lead pack now through the trioval. As you now see the other cars are in turn one. So it's possible they get caught here. That's the that's the problem they face by pitting early. They, they went on a team strategy and pitted together. Let's see if it pays off. This group that now inherits the race lead with Lane and Kalen and the rest of this group. They do have to pit at some point. But with where Scruggs and Regan, they have now started to reel in Gagnon and Bogue. I don't think they're going to be close enough to really make any substantial moves. 33 seconds, just about the average pit lane time. 34 from Gagnon and Bogue. You look to the gap in between Colton Lane and Dustin Scruggs. We're at 39. They are not within that window right now of retaking the lead when this group pits. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that all plays out math-wise and the what-ifs and all the other factors that can play in here. Because right now, this what this bottom line is doing, you know, everyone except, I guess, for Colton Lane, you're in line right here and you're sort of still saving some gas and trying to see what you can make happen here. James Morgan now back and forth. You got Abner Acosta back and fifth. Doug and Jeff Evans, sixth and seventh lined up together. So this group might be content to just ride it out until the very end. There's two very different pit strategies. There's the one that says pit as soon as it's open. Listen, that worked in our last race, by the way. That worked for Zach Panzarella. That worked for um, Nicholas Hunter who won the race because they pitted early and sort of found themselves in a catbird seat due to a late caution. Then as the other side is, listen, I don't want to pit. I want to pit the last second in case something weird happens. So both strategies and both can pay off in different scenarios. It also really comes down to, do you want to lose that lead draft? Is we're well, speaking of losing, is that Matt Gagnon right there? No, I believe that's Nick Byer. Okay, that's Nick. Okay. Yeah. 
But he's going to get lapped here. So now we'll see how quickly he can find a spot in line right here. Or if he's going to fall all the way to the back. He needs to get down to that middle lane and start to think about where to pull in line. Or he's going to end up way back there. Now, right now, he is uh, the only... Well, he's now the first car one lap down. Steve Loving's also a lap down. But he needs to get back in line here and sort of find that draft. Or he'll be well behind the line again. Leaders right now entering turn one. That last group of four that are currently trying to catch up to this pack are now entering turn three. So as they come off of turn two in this pack, I mean, they are... That pack of four is not... They've caught a little bit. They've closed that gap from around 39.7 to around 38.4. They're not bad. But that pack of four is now working their way around Steve Loving. They'll lose a bit of time now. And honestly, this lead pack, they're riding around, sitting on that bottom lane, kind of waiting for those fuel tanks to go down and waiting for pit stops to come into play. We still got a little bit before this group is going to come in, it looks like. And Scruggs, Regan, Gagnon, and Bogue all just making that pit stop early for strategy reasons. And... They can be good to the end now. They don't have to think about pitting, but this lead group still has one more to make. Yeah, so that's the question is how does the pit stop go? Who, you know, does everyone pit correctly? Does anyone get caught speeding? You know, all the what ifs that are still out there will help determine what's going on. Well, let's take a look, I think, for a moment, if we can. We got, a, oh man, Mark Kalen right up on Colton Lane. If we got a moment, I'm curious to see who we got on driver cams, Josh, and who we got some views that hold on what about is pitting let's stick with this for a second i said that and now what about has called out that they are pitting there's doug evans jeff evans i think bradley holly's down in there i saw some come down right there a big group of them actually look at that there's dalton guy in the background it's a big herd of cars right there a lot of drivers in and i just checked right as you said that let's go on board with bradley holly for the pit stop Oh, look at that beautiful shot right there. It's got that webcam mounted to the headset so you can see live what he sees. You see this big monitor in front of him. It's got a monitor in the top left with the track and telemetry and more scenes up in the left. He's already off and away and right behind a teammate. That's a great stop here for Bradley Holly. Now here are the race leaders now coming through the corner. And they are now pitting. Colton Lane is called off. He's pitting. So now we're going to have another group of pitters here. Here comes, I believe, pretty much everybody else that was still left to pit. This is everybody else. This will be the full field, so this will be pit stops at least under the green flag done. Nobody else will need to pit from here on out. Race leader Richard Regan Jr. Here comes this pack to try and catch up. 18 seconds. And I can confirm right now that as of these pit entries, no black flags from either Whataback or the, the independents thereafter. So no penalties to be served as long as pit exit goes okay. Now you see some entrance or, or exits probably happening right there. And there's Richard Regan. So this could be an interesting blend line to see how Regan Bogue fares. Here they come. The cars who put it after him. It's all going to be there. They go past Kalen. There's Morgan on the inside. There's Colton Lane on the inside. The benefit that those guys are going to get is they're going to be able to quickly suck into a draft when since Rick and Bogue just passed him by. That was that line of four that pitted earlier. And there's that second grouping that just pit. Uh, the they're blasting by together. everybody on the outside. And everybody is going to be close enough that I think you're right, Derek. They can kind of blend back in and get back into line, but they are split up right now. There's that first group of five. You go 2.6 seconds back. Here's the next group with Colton Lane. They need to get formed up with that group that is on yep. the outside being led by Jeff Evans to try and get hooked up again. Yeah, that's what's going to hurt this group right now. Look at them. There's, what, seven cars in that camera shot and across two different lanes. You got uh, Colton Lane and Morgan on the bottom. You got Mark Killen on the back. You got the Evans family members up there. You got the, it was that in the middle, the 184 that's Bradley Holly right there in the middle of all of it. They need to get lined up in a line and go run down RBM. Race down well, the back straightaway. Well, this is still that second group that 
Needs to get formed up single file if they want any there chance of catching this lead group. 3.3 3 seconds up. is that gap. Colton Lane just told James Morgan, let's lift a little bit and get these guys in front of us and let's make a line here. So now we got a line of a six, one, two, three, four, seven versus a line of four or five up front. Morgan touched that yellow line. Oh my goodness. And there's that lead pack of four on the lead lap. I think they've picked up, yeah, they picked up Steve Loving, who is now the only driver one lap down. So he's at the tail end of this group. He's not racing with this group on the racetrack. He's at the tail end of the group, but 3.7 seconds is the gap now. Tail end of this group, at least on the racetrack, or at least on the timing screen, is going to be Dustin Scruggs, leader of that second line is now going to be Jeff Evans. Let's take a look at that comparison gap. 3.4 is the gap right now. Not closing quickly, but it is closing. No, and every time there's a small bobble in the line like there was for Dustin Scruggs, you see that number kind of move around ever so slightly on both ways. If that back group bobbles a little bit that number will get bigger so that's the number to track as you see now both groups here side by side on your screen you see jeff evans in that purple car sort of reminded me of some of the older schemes in nascar sort of some of the old maybe a t-mobile paint scheme almost what it kind of reminds me of but he's got it out there and it's still getting pushed pretty well by bradley holly abner is now up to the top trying to make something happen but he's up there by himself and That'll frustrate the, his fellow competitors who want him to get in line and help push. That would have burned their speed out, but look at what happened on the left side of your screen there, Derek. That lead pack has broke apart. The top two breakaway with Gagnon and Regan in the 56 and 14. Bogue and Scruggs fell back by only a couple attempts by about a car length and a half on the racetrack, but that has given this second lane an opportunity, but they are back to side by side that's not what they need to be doing with 21 minutes to go no look at that gaps out to 3.6 because bradley holly pulled out with abner acosta now james morgan's going to move up so even right now what these guys are thinking is hey listen if i can't win what can i do you know where can i find myself where do i feel most comfortable and that's sort of what's happening but look at that dustin scruggs well outside gets to quote one of my favorite movies just a bit outside that movie was made well before you were born do you know have you seen major league major league? no oh my keep goodness. in mind i'm also not a baseball fan if that i'm assuming it's a baseball movie it's a comedy movie though it's got charlie sheen and bob euchre and uh other people i can't name right now yep never nope never seen it all right well we'll add it to your homework list for one of your next long international flights I, I, I will add it to the to the download list. There you go. Well, right now, the list right now for the top of this race is Richard Regan, Matt Gagnon, Reese Bogue, Dustin Scruggs are the top four. They got Steve Loving in the middle here. Steve's not racing for anything as far as spots right now, but he's helping this group along. And right now, Steve's the first car lap down. He's hoping for a yellow so he could get back on the lead lap. And next time he's in this spot, he would be racing for something. Here's that second pack again. Bradley Holly leads this pack with Abner Acosta behind pushing. That Whataback team was just getting oh, on the man. radio, letting Abner know that they wanted him to get down. And we see that onboard look with Bradley Holly again here as well. I wonder, Derek, now looking at when they went side by side, I started to think maybe just maybe the second line was all under the same impression that the lead four wouldn't be good to the end on fuel. Remember, the lead four are on an alternate strategy. They are on 15 laps on the stint counter. The rest of the field's on about eight or seven. I was wondering if they were maybe thinking that they would run out of fuel and they could just kind of buy their time and wait. But once I heard all the Whataback drivers screaming to let Abner come down, now i think that they were just trying to gain some track position for when they do catch up to the lead pack because then if they were thinking that the lead four weren't an issue they could keep racing it out wouldn't have been yelling at abner to get back in line 
Well, here's the problem. All that side-by-side -side racing. Look at the gap now. 4.6 seconds. It has gained almost a second from when we were tracking it before. So they lost about a whole second by doing that whole little switcheroo and putting Holly and Acosta up at the front of this line. There it is. 4.1 is the official number between Scruggs and Holly. So half a second gap or half a second gain in that gap, pardon me, is what we are now facing here with about 18 minutes to go. Well, I think it's time we talk about it. We got some green flag racing. We're kind of watching the two lanes move around here. Of course, the question of the day in the PRL Discord for trucks and Grand Nationals had to do with, for the rest of your life, you can only pick one, cheese or bacon on a ham on a burger. On a hamburger, I guess is the right way to say it. And of course, as you heard during trucks, Josh and I are both team cheese, very clearly. Well, let's walk you through the Grand National answers. It's much more lopsided, Josh. Here it is. Team cheese. This is our team. Hashtag team cheese. Danny Cervantes, Mark Kalen, James Morgan, Jeff Evans, Dalton Geyer, Steve Loving are all on our side. Richard Regan and Reese Bogue, the two leaders of Regan Bogue Motorsports, are team bacon. Now, on top of that, Josh, let me share a quote with you that I think will, will just will blow your mind. But hold on to your desk. And it was from Richard Regan when he simply said, I got to find it. Cheese on a burger is disgusting. That's just fundamentally incorrect. <laughs> there he is. Like, there's fun Mr. Fundamentally wrong. Yeah. Yeah, cheese on a burger is disgusting. He's admitted he's a picky eater. Uh, said, what was it? Um, his teammate Reese Bogue says the only thing that Richard eat will eat is Kit Kats, mac and cheese, and bacon. Somebody grab this screen cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please we'll and thank you. you. Right there. Yeah, thanks cheese on a burger is disgusting. That was his quote. Now, if we can go back to that second line there, it's sort of a fun thing to share with you. I got to find there is some beliefs across the, the, the Google search community that Mark Kalen's family is responsible for the cheeseburger. So what was the detail on this? I'm what's our, what's our what's our sources on this? So it says here. <clears throat> Uh, this is from Google. It said, if you if you Google who invented the cheeseburger, it says, was the cheeseburger invented in Louisville, Kentucky? It says, the legend has it, the combination of a hamburger, cheese, and a bun was invented in Louisville in 1934 by Carl Kalen at his restaurant Kalen's on Newburgh Road. And then we are told that, I believe, through a grandparent connection is how Mark Kalen is connected to Carl Kalen. Now, I will say for the record, there is some di some different arguments on Google about who invented the cheeseburger, but we think maybe his family invented the cheeseburger. I can live with that story. And if so, thank you, Mark Kalen. Much appreciated. All right, so there we go. That's your cheeseburger story for this race. Now, let's take a look here at this top Dustin Scruggs out of line. In fact, not only out of that, look at new leader Matt Gagnon has got around Richard Regan, and Reese Bogue has also got around him. There's a whole shakeup here. Maybe that gas story you had is more accurate than you thought, because Richard Regan has sort of given up the lead. I'm I'm starting to wonder that same thing. They're at 20 laps, at least from ATVO timing. We're looking at about 20 laps, 19 now. That would top these fuel tanks off at 40. Which is a lot. That would be right on the edge. It'd be right there at the, at the max you think you could pull off here. For reference, the rest of the field did pit about 13 laps ago. We're on lap 47, so it would have been 34. That was about estimated halfway. Or close yep. to estimated yep. halfway. The other possibility that's sort of being brought up is maybe it's an issue of temperatures in these engines is why they have let Gagnon and Respo get to the front, but that doesn't really help Richard Regan. So I'm not sure how to interpret that. Steve Loving, by the way, is up here, still trying to get that lap back, still trying to see if he could, you know, maybe earn it back the hard, the old way, the, art, the old fashioned, the hard way, and just get around these leaders and be there even under green. But right now, with about 13 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock, it's Gagnon, Bogue, Regan, and Scruggs, your top four. 
and it's Abner Acosta, Doug Evans, Daniel Knight on back from there. I have to say, though, Josh, unless an unfortunate yellow happens here, I think this two groups are settled as far as who's in what group. But I don't think that back group can catch up here without a yellow. No, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of catching up unless we get that oh, yellow because we can to the top. check in with that gap here in a second. But there it goes. Bogue looks up top. He just took that run that he got, decided to take it instead of get out of the gas. Honestly, don't hate the idea, especially when you're running with no nobody really around you. Get the run, take it, let the run die off, move back in. Yeah, that might have been an issue of, of, of letting the temperatures cool down a little bit here. Look at the gap has come back a little bit. Dustin Scruggs to Abner Acosta, 3.8 seconds now. Bradley Holly has been moved out of the front of that pack, by the way. He was leading it earlier. Now fourth in line right in front of James Morgan and Colton Lane. So that gap has come down a little bit, but I just don't think it's enough. We're not that many more laps left here. They'd have to have an incredible amount of gap that they're not getting here to, to be in contention in this race. And there goes Doug Evans up top. Yeah. I think he, he just dumped out of the pack. That wasn't even... If he was trying to make a run on Abner, yeah. that was miscalculated. Yeah, it's either a leapfrog attempt that didn't went wrong, or or he thought his temps were too hot here. Look, he's going to pull right behind his son, Jeff Evans. Now, sort of interesting story about the Evans family, uh, Josh. Doug has one PR win at Indianapolis. You know who pushed him to the win at Indianapolis? His son, Jeff. So we could, if we if we get a yellow and if this group catches up, we could see two related people do another push to the win. Yeah, wouldn't that be, yeah, wouldn't it be like a family night at Talladega if that happens? Just right. You know, we had Austin and Nick in the first race. We could have Doug and Jeff in the second. That's, that's a good that's a valid point that's 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 why you're a broadcast journalist joshua lee broadcast journalist that's really that's 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 a lot of words i don't know broadcast i don't know about the journalist part that's true you came with no notes i did not come with any notes i also came in commentated well on about what two hours notice yeah, roughly there. It's, it's shout Which out is to not Justin anybody's Prince. fault. Yeah, shout out to no, no. Justin Prince, to JP, who just recently moved. And unfortunately, uh, his computer's a little bit too powerful for his uh, new building's internet or uh, power breakers. Yeah, we're going to get him one of those old, you've seen that old TV show, those little bikes that you use to, for the power generator. Yeah, that's about what they've Aren't got you? for his new, his new <laughs> yeah, building. Right? Yeah, so big shout out to Justin. And listen, uh, all kidding aside, you know, I have a lot of fun working with Justin. One of the best voices in Irising commentary. Uh, I, I love working with Justin. Possibly the person I consistently work with that I have the most chemistry with. And, it, you know, we have fun together. So, JP, I miss you. I hope you're back next week. I, I love working with Josh and with Mark and Dylan and the others. But JP and I have been friends for a long time. We've worked both in person and virtual together. He, it, it's smooth working with Justin. He knows his stuff, man. There's no one I can think of that has things memorized the way that Justin Prince does. And that's also, why he's on I, the race spot TV commentary Prince. team as well. well. They what? He'll hate. He'll, you know, he'll hate this because Justin Prince loves what he does. He loves broadcasting. He loves commentary. He doesn't like when I publicly praise him. So sorry, Justin. I love you regardless. Hopefully he is at least watching on in the cycles of about one hour that he has on his computer before his power goes out. Yeah, feed the hamsters, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, give, the, give those well, hamsters man, some food. Look at Bo there, getting starting to touch that yellow line. That That is a dangerous game he's playing. At least trying to cool that car off a little bit. But when you start touching that yellow line here at Dega, it gets a little slick. I, I wouldn't flirt with that too much. You know what this is right now, Derek? This is just buying time. Nine minutes left on the clock. I mean, this lead pack of six, five of them being, or four of them even, being on the lead lap. Loving and Bayer in this group, not on the lead lap. They're the 27 and the double zero there. Uh, fourth and fifth in line. They are ahead of this second group here, led by Abner Acosta. Acosta is not moving that gap down at all. So that lead pack of four, they're just trying to buy as much time on that clock as they can. This is the equivalent of fourth quarter in a football game yeah. up by 20 
and eight minutes left on the clock. Oh. You, and you have the ball. And you buy, yeah. you buy, buy, buy as much time as you can to wean that clock down. It's exactly what this lead group is doing. In fact, it might be close or not because, I mean, what the threat of anything going wrong, a single bobble in this draft, a single wreck in this draft, and that other lane can catch up. I mean, you would just be up by six. You know, you might be that close where he's even up by six. You know, you have to stay perfect here. It seems simple. You're kind of bored probably just running amongst a few of you. But listen, if Re if Reese Bogue makes a move too soon, if uh, Dustin Scruggs makes a move from the back, if these guys make contact and wreck, all just, that second line is prevalent. So you're right. That's what I was thinking too as well. Is like, this is just like burning the clock in NFL football. This is just like kind of passing the, the puck around the hockey. You're just sort of passing and dribbling back and forth across, you know, football or soccer or whatever your preferred term is. That's where we sit right now for these top five or six cars. This seven minutes and 35 seconds cannot go by fast enough. Meanwhile, for that other group, for Acosta, Knight, Holly, and Morgan, Lane, Evans, Evans, Caitlin, and others, seven and a half minutes is going to go by in a snap of a finger. Seven minutes can go by very quick. Lap times right now within the pack at 51 seconds, just about flat in this lead group. Okay, I'm going to change our timing tower to last lap ran ready for this eric sure top four 51 flat everybody else 51 six yep okay well that i see why oh look at that they, they are this. done the waiting way, their waiting is over and by the way i should point out right now we're at just under seven minutes we are probably at the point of no return. Maybe, maybe at six minutes we'd be safe, but I don't think so. So right now, what these guys know is now it's we're done. That whole idea of a caution catching up, the whole idea of blase blase blah, that's done. Now you gotta go fight. You, you you eat what you hunt. In other words, that's where you sit right now in this race. And look at them three wide here coming into turn number three, and they are fighting for every inch. That's Jeff Evans in the middle with his I think his dad behind him. That is other cars. That's Bradley Holly trying to pull out here in front of, or out behind Daniel Knight. And the cars up top I can't identify from that small screen. Oh, there's Nick McLaughlin with Jeff Evans up top, and now it's all changed up again. That's Holly right behind the 17 of Daniel Knight, Colton Lane. Is there in that inside line as well? Abner Acosta sits in the middle lane. Third lane form. This is really the battle for the top five at this point. And so let's flip your analogy. Up front, it's fourth quarter. It's it's you know it's five minutes to go. You're up by six. You're trying to hold the ball. For these guys, look at this. As they're three and four wide, look at these guys. It is now they've got the onside kick. Now they are in it that that sort of that two-minute offense, that no huddle offense that you know, there, there's no timeouts. That's where this group is. So use that NFL analogy. They know they cannot make a single mistake if they want to do well. Even a top five is a good points day. Man, look at that. Look at the contrast in those two images. A big pack formed in that battle for fifth. Almost no movement yet in that battle for first. Five minutes left on the clock. Once that clock reaches about 51 seconds, you should know the white flag is going to be out that next time by. They are three wide at some points in that battle for fifth. They gotta be careful. Caution comes out, this race is over. So now, let me ask the other question. We both know that Richard Regan is a competitor and I, and I love him for that. I, that's not a knock on who Richard Regan is. He's not content running second place. Reese Bogue is not content running third place. Uh, Dustin Scruggs probably is not content running fourth place. When does one of those drivers make the move? When do they get up there and try to pull out a line? Do they make contact? Do they do something wrong? It looks calm there, but up front, that bottom screen, that's the calm before the storm, Joshua Lee. They're going to have to make a move soon. Richard Regan Jr. sitting in second. I think we all know he does not want to sit there for long and in that. that lead group he's got that spot don't worry and i'll matt bring gagnon back that picture of the big pack no it's okay matt i was gonna say matt gagnon knew that too look at how he drifted up out of that corner coming out of two looking to drift up again here out of four he's not giving up the bottom lane but he's also trying to defend against someone going high he is trying to make that car 
about five lanes wide. Trying to and doing a decent job of it as well to try and hold uh, Richard Regan Jr. and Reese Bogue behind. Scruggs, not a factor. He's got Steve Loving and Nick Byer in between him. Some straggling going on in that second pack. They almost wreck. I think that was James Morgan that had a big moment down to the bottom of the racetrack. They stay straight, still three by three. And that gap to the lead pack that we're taking a look at in the big picture is still going up as they're wrecking in the second pack. Morgan gets turned by Acosta. Oh, there's Morgan. Got it saved, I think. Caution is out. Matt Gagnon has won this race. I can tell you that where everyone else finishes, we'll have to take a moment and see where it's all going to happen. I believe the wreck starts near Bradley Holly. We'll have to wait and see when the race pot replay machine gets pulled, like pulled up here. But Matt Gagnon has won this race at Talladega. He will beat out his teammates and he will claim a victory and an invitation to the all-star race. For Gagnon to walk away with this win, let's take a look at what happened. It happened around Acosta. I don't want to say it's Acosta's fault yet, because here comes Bradley Holly. Bottom yeah, like to the top. Block made. Contact. Ooh, and Acosta comes down and clips it back into Morgan, who really did a great job of holding on that car. If we ever could get a view, maybe an onboard with Morgan, that's a wild ride to go from the middle to the top to the bottom and really not hit much of anything. And, and that sounds simple, but let me tell you, Josh, at Talladega, that's, uh, that's quite impressive. Watch this here. This is going to be from Morgan. You're going to see the wreck happen. That's Bradley Holly right there. And he's going to get clipped here in just a second. Doesn't hit the outside. Oh, he does kind of hit the outside wall. He sort of straightens him out. Gets it woed up on the brakes and back in the gas here. That's an incredible save. Take a look at one more look from the blimp. There's Holly, bottom, top. Abner just oh, had, that. Abner Abner had, had to check up. He had no choice. Yeah. And he got a bump from the behind in the fat process. That from, I think it was Nick McLaughlin who got Abner behind and sort of helped create the chaos that ended this race. Well, 55 minutes went by in a breeze. Technically, Steve Loving will get the lucky dog here before the race ends. So he will finish on the lead lap. You saw him go around on the top side of your screen there. And wow, what a night for Regan Boak. What an impressive. We talked about how teammates were important. We talked about how team strategy was important. And I believe Regan Boak has the top four finishing spots in this race tonight, Josh. That is an incredible team performance. Great night. And they played that strategy perfect. I mean, they were four cars strong coming into the pit lane early we honestly didn't know how that was going to go from up here in the commentary booth. It went exactly how they wanted it to and exactly how they needed it to. And it worked out with the pack getting antsy and the wreck ensuing, giving them the easy victory. They didn't even need to race it out. They walked it off just like we saw in the truck series. Yeah, they did. They sort of walked it off. You got that, that interception in the fourth quarter. Your defense came up strong and... You know, that's certainly what happened for Matt Gagnon when that caution came out. I'm sure that was a big sigh of relief. Not sure if he has his camera up this week. He, last week, he had the Instagram advertisement there on the webcam. He was advertising his Instagram page, but uh, I had to talk to him, kind of reminding to put Instagram in front of it to help advertise correctly. So I'm sure he'll get his plug in here once we get over to Victory Lane. Well, for the second time tonight, unfortunately, we're going to finish it under caution. A little less question, and well, what was that? A little less question in our minds here, Josh, about who won this race because uh, this was not quite <laughs> the photo finish of Nick Hunter and Zach Panzarella. Not gonna need the slow mo, the photo finish camera, but what we do need is a checkered flag to give to that 14 because Matt Gagnon is gonna grab the win here at Talladega. What a great job. What a great sigh of relief for Matt. Matt has uh, been racing your Grand Nationals, has signed up to run the Cup Series. I don't think he's actually got into a Cup Series race yet this year, but was trying to pull the double duty. But great job here representing for Regan Bogue. And uh, that will ironically not change much of the point standings because here's your top two points. Finishing second 
in fourth here. Technically still the white flag, so we're going to kind of fill some time here. We know who's going to win, but we got to let Barney the Flagman do his job and, uh, and fulfill what happened here. Well, Josh, what a great night of racing. Some big moves, some big opportunities, and uh, I had fun. I love Talladega so much, and I mean, I mean three races that I commentated this week here on Race Spot TV, Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series on Monday, the Grand National Series and the Truck Series tonight. Three completely different races, three completely different cars, and three, uh, honestly, uh, the only parody being finishing under caution both races tonight, but three completely different finishes. Yeah, very much so. And we're not done with with PRL here on Race Spot this week. Tomorrow night, Reese Gardner and Mark Kino will be here for the Super Formulas. And then Sunday night, it's Dylan Coyle, it's Robert Hill. It's Cup Series at Dega. It's a 90-minute race. Let me tell you something. Those next-gen cars can draft, buddy. So there'll be some big moves in that race as well. I'm excited for that. So we're not done with Dega. There's still one more PRL Dega race to go. So one more race at Talladega, and that's going to be after the actual NASCAR Cup Series race at T Talladega. I've gotten unlucky the last couple of years with the Talladega racing with my travel schedule. This year, I'm going to be doing uh, an event on the day of, I think last year, I was flying home from South Africa, Talladega Day. I haven't had much luck with Talladega, but Matt Gagnon has had some good luck in the sim tonight. So he's going to walk away with this win with three teammates behind him. There you go. So the pace car has pulled down as it's the direction in timed races, and Matt's going to get to have that little slow victory run right here. And congrats to Matt on winning at Talladega. I think there's going to be some issues in scoring here that I'll have to sort out because I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I can see. I think, I think Reese pulled ahead a little bit there by accident. They'll put him back in third place. Timing and scoring might show him up in P2. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think now it's going to show Richard Regan in a second. Good. But what a great job at Regan Boat. What an amazing run by those guys. They uh, really put on a show in team. Look at that picture by Matt, by the way. That is amazing. Matt always has cool hairdos, cool designs, cool outfits. He's been a couple last season, Josh. He even raced in a, in a suit. He deserves that crown on his head. That crown is well deserved. Does it count as a tiara? Is there a difference? Yeah, I was going to say, maybe not that crown. Maybe, yeah, that's not the crown I would design for someone who just won a Talladega. That's... Is it like yeah. is it like a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square? Is it like a TR is a crown, but a crown is oh, not a TR? Wow. Getting, getting deep for I'm getting Wednesday too philosophical for the end of the yeah, broadcast. Yeah, you really are. Look at that. Big thoughts out of a little man. All right, well, congrats here to Regan Bogue. They're going to come around one more time and do some burnouts here. The number 14 gets to do the biggest burnout of all because he has done it. He is victorious. Look at that. Got the Twitch advertisement on the side of the cars. So you peeped out the Instagram this week, but another, there's another advertisement with the Twitch channel. Sometimes people are just good at self-promotions, Josh, and then there's people like me who just, well, not. I mean, I think I have a different username on every single social platform. So as long as Matt Gagnon is doing it right, and at least every social platform is the same username, I mean, he's got it going. But let's take a look at those full finishing results, and they are not going to look that good because uh, Gagnon did get moved down to 20th. So we're going to pretend that Matt Gagnon's at the top of this page. Yeah, so it's Matt Gagnon first, it's Richard Regan second, Reese Spoke third, then Dustin Scruggs, Bradley Holly, Daniel Knight, Mark Kalen, Adam Zemke, Colton Lane, James Morgan, Thomas Sink round out your top 12. I'm going to move down here. It's going to be Doug Evans, Jim Westerfield, Dalton Geyer, Jeff Evans, Dominic Begin, Chris Dean, Nick McLaughlin, Abner Acosta, Steve Loving, and there's Matt, who's our race winner. So they'll get that fixed in post scoring. And then Nick Byer, the last car, and the only car to technically finish one lap down. It was a great night of racing at Talladega. Lots of fun was had, lots of big moves, lots of opportunities, lots of points gained for some drivers. So we're going to wait for our Regan Bogue drivers to enter into the green room so we can catch an interview with them here.
Josh, wow, that's uh, that's 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 good. We learned some stuff tonight. We learned that Richard Regan is a monster for his thoughts on cheese on a burger. We learned that Mark Kalen's responsible for the cheeseburger. And it turns out there's a lot of beef amongst these drivers at the end of Talladega. I wouldn't expect anything else at the end of Talladega other than the beef and drama that we might have gotten, especially from those drivers that were in that second pack because we heard all of the disappointments the wrong word we heard a lot of the arguments going on back there like trying to figure out a way to catch up to that lead pack but nobody was catching the regan bogue drivers at the front and we've got our top three ready to go derek what do you say we talk to our race winner matt gagnon let's do it right now matt congratulations you are victorious at talladega uh before we start any sort of interviewing can we uh get my RBM teammates in here. They deserve yeah, a lot of recognition let's, for this. Let's do, it. let's do my least favorite corporate America thing. Let's do a group interview. These never yeah. go well when, you're, when you're trying to do it, right? <laughs> There's Matt. By the way, uh, I noticed you get your Instagram thing is missing. Yeah, okay. I got here a little late and I forgot <laughs> to put it up and I didn't do the camera. But hey, look, I put the Instagram thing. You DM'd me to put the Instagram <laughs> thing up and I said, thanks, Derek. So it is, it's nice M to know that someone listens to me. Racing. Thank hey. you. <laughs> well let's talk about as a whole a great night for rbm matt we're gonna start with you um a great dominant run a strategy by you guys put yourself out there early so what was it like those last couple laps i saw you kind of drifting high trying to kind of block richard before i asked them you, uh that richard, right there um just uh a little nervous you know with these timed races and all it comes down to the last five minutes of these super speedway races a caution is going to end it so i was as soon as i got that call for five minutes left i'm over here shaking so that was probably why and then before i talk to your teammates i have to ask i didn't see your comment today i'm not sure if you saw the question the rest of your life you can only put cheese or bacon on a on a burger what would be your choice and by the way your teammates have already answered so they might judge you based on this uh, I mean, I get judged daily by them, so, uh, cheese, I'm, I'll be basic, cheese. There you go. All right. Well, sticking around. Uh, now, let's talk to the man who hates cheese on a burger. In fact, he told me it's disgusting. Richard Regan, that's P2. Yeah, no, cheese definitely uh, not on a burger for me. Like, no cheese, not American, not pepper jack, not Swiss, not provolone, nothing? Yeah, no, nothing. You are a monster. <laughs> You're a monster. In fact, Richard will tell you it's true. After he made his comment today, I just sent him a DM. What was the question I asked you? Oh, man. I don't want to say that on the broadcast. Fair enough. They say there was a lot of judgment. There was a lot of judgment to be had. Oh, yeah. Have some cheese. Well, let me ask you about the race. Um, P2. So I have two questions. One, when were you going to make the move? Uh, and two, why were you not leading? Well, so I wasn't leading because I led the majority uh, of like when RBM was leading before the pit stop, I was leading the majority of the time. Um, so I was a little tight on fuel. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to make sure I had a cushion. And uh, me and Reese were going to, well, I told everybody, I'm like, because no one's like, everyone's like, oh, we don't want to sit around and not race. I'm like, well, when we get two to go, we can race. So uh, me and Reese were uh, coming up with the plan. Uh, like secretly and uh we were definitely gonna leave matt out to hang like hang him out to dry but uh <laughs> caution came out so that didn't happen but i'm glad that matt finally got his first win and now i gotta come up with a new uh comeback telling him to let me know when he gets his first win in prl yeah i finally get that off the way so i've heard by the way your your menu is kit kats mac and cheese and bacon uh mostly just kit kats and mac and cheese Okay, so I, I have to ask this question and we will move on. I have to know. I found out that uh, my partner eats Kit Kats. Like, they don't break them off one by one. They sort of eat all four at once. Are, are you that big of a monster? Menace activity. No. Menace activity. No, 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 no. You cannot eat Kit okay. Kats that way. Absolutely Thank not. You. Thank you. All right. Well, that is Richard Regan. Did a great job and you could do your stuff. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, State Analyzer for coming on board. Uh, Mission 22, Neonism Paints, Need a Paint, go to facebook.com slash Neonism and tell them the PRL sent you. Multiple Cirrhosis Society, um, everybody at Regenbogue Motorsports for working together. Even though uh, a couple of them had some mistakes on pit road, they still 
uh, made it to where you know we could secure a team win. Um, and then everybody at PRL and you guys at race spot. There you go. Well, that's Richard Regan in third in line here. Reese Bogue. Reese, you told me you were also a big fan of these tracks, if I recall, but you furnished pretty well. Yeah, you know, I it just, it's unpredictable and just depends on, I guess, who you're racing with. So, um, some days I like it, some days I don't. Today wasn't bad just because we're around the same group and we're, I guess, uh, discussing as a team what we're doing. So, it wasn't too squirrely, I guess you could say. Um, but just. I like to, as I said to you, I like to have a shot. If I could just have a shot at the end, I'm happy, which sucks we didn't get to race it out, but glad Matt was able to win. And uh, yeah, not the biggest fan, but uh, no, I'll take a 38 day. Normally I get wrecked or flipped or blown up or something here. So, <laughs> All right, well, next week is Dover. What's what's the plan? Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. I uh, kind of liked Dover the last time I was there, at least. Uh, I felt like I was pretty fast, just I had a little bit of issues with whatever happened on pit road, or I think I had internet issues, whatever the deal was. Um, but, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, that'll be fun. Kind of, It kind of feels more like a short track-ish, I guess. Not really, but just the way it drives to me, or how it did drive. So, I'm excited. Uh, I might be able to give Richard a run for his money there. I don't know. It, these guys are hard to beat and harder to compete with, but... Uh, We'll see. I'm, I'm uh, right for it. All right. So let's come back to this menace activity you have. You also believe that cheese is disgusting on a burger. Explain yourself. I'm okay with cheese. Like you got, let's just say, cheese and turkey or cheese and ham like that. Perfectly fine with cheese and a hamburger. I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't, I don't get it. It's just like plasticky. I don't, I don't know. It's just not me. But I'll load ketchup on my hamburgers. No cheese. Even worse. <laughs> ketchup, <laughs> tomatoes, I'll throw a little bacon on there sometimes. Uh, okay. no, here's, that's what it. here's what I don't understand. Like, you go to McDonald's and you just get the cheeseburger, not the Big Mac, not the Quarter Pounder, just, just that basic cheeseburger with like, oh, it's so good. It's like they have crack in it. You can you can never eat just one <laughs> and you guys are missing out. I don't understand. I go to McDonald's and order a hamburger with ketchup and pickles. That's all I get at my burgers from McDonald's. Wow. All right. Well, there it is. That's the hot take from Reese Bogue. What a great night on track for RBM. But uh, right now we got a little bit of beef here because, well, our race winner, Josh, he's he's Team Cheese and his team owners, they're, they're, they're on the wrong side of the argument. I don't get it, Can guys. I, just... I don't get it. Go ahead, Matt. I, I'm not saying anything bad about bacon on cheeseburgers. I mean, I just if I had to pick one, I'd go for cheese. I'm just saying That's the... and yes, I do put right, ketchup on right. my burgers. You're on the right side here. You don't need to justify yourself. You have friends here. You're in a safe space. <laughs> it's always yeah, the some two of these guys aren't weirdos. Out. Go ahead, Reese. Go ahead. No, I said it's always the two owners out here. What the heck? Yeah, it's always the always the weird the weird guys. Well, listen, great job tonight, guys. Uh, stick around. We'll talk to you in a few minutes after we're off the air. Awesome. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Guys. Just a uh, quick shout out to RBM. Uh, good job, guys. Uh, McCoy subs and. Uh, Good team effort tonight, and I'll uh, we'll see everybody next week. All right, that's Reese Bogue, Matt Gagnon, and Richard Regan. One, two, and three. Well, Josh, our time tonight here on Race Spot has come to an end. It's time to say goodbye. And it's time to say hello to Miles the Monster, because remember, we're going racing at Dover Motor Speedway in one week's time. It's the same track again with the trucks and the Grand Nationals. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't think you can get much different than Talladega than dover motor speedway but it is equally exciting that turn two wall and that turn four wall is going to have a lot of drivers that are going to be meeting with it uh, come next wednesday night but we're going racing again middle of the season in full swing excited for another week of trucks and grand, grand nationals action when we go racing from virtual dover motor speedway derek it's going to be exciting. Maybe not Talladega exciting, but it is going to be a one for these.